Fluffers on strike, Danny boy. Leo, when I give you a channel artifact, yeah, like the Fluffers on strike shirt, it's called an artifact. Yeah, big, big, uh, big uh, video. Very cool shirts. You know, we gave one to a fan. You cutting the sleeves off that shirt is the same as pouring gasoline and dropping a flame on old stars and stripes. You basically <laughs> burned an American flag by doing that. Look, <clears throat> I'm sure that I can give you the formula to make this cut for numerous shirts and you can sell them. I'm sure they would sell more. You can ask the fans. I think that showing off, setting somebody up for a little success, giving them that a little bit more of a view of the bicep is something nice to do to a man when giving him a shirt. Don't you think it's just setting them up for success? Do you agree with that? Men are going to be more successful if you can see a couple more inches of bicep. And the only thing that matters to me, yes. Leo, if it were up to me, first of all, you'd be wearing head to toe potato sacks or maybe a body bag. I, would I wouldn't, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing you in a body bag. Just walking around in a body bag all day. I didn't say walking around. Oh, uh, you want me dead in a body bag <laughs> because I cut your fluffers on strike shirt? One what of the say? ones. Raise your hand if you want a Leo in a body bag. Wow, dude. Three to one. You just want me dead. What mm -hmm. is this? What is this bullshit? Would you guys even show up to my funeral if that's the case? You can't say this and then come to a funeral of the guy that you said you want him to, to, to die. What the fuck's going on? If yeah. I can smoke at the funeral, I'll pull oh up. Oh, my God, dude. Fucking. No, dude. Honestly, I don't, I don't want either one of you at my funeral. I'm going to go ahead and say that right now. I don't either want Dino, or, mm, what about Dino or Austin. No, if I don't I'm want the guy I definitely the don't bag. want you there, dude. Yeah, because I'll be in the front row pretending to cry next to your sister. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to fuck my sister at my wedding? Uh, I'm sorry, at my, at my funeral, you're trying to yeah, fuck my definitely sister. Definitely not your wedding. Definitely not my wedding. You're being wed to death. Now, listen to me. Uh -huh. You'd be trying to fuck my sister at my funeral. <laughs> now, they give you some time on the mic. Are you doing, are, are you doing some time? At my funeral. I'm doing some time. You're doing some time. I'm Regular, a, you're, you're doing like your fucking prison rape joke. No, no, no. I, I'm not doing material. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do some riffing. Crowd work. I'm going to do some riffing because oh. I want everybody at your funeral to know that I'm fucking funny. Oh, come on, dude. It's got to be about me. This will be a language oh. barrier. You're going to learn Spanish to do time at my funeral? None of them speak Italian. You have to take a little Italian and some Spanish if you really uh, want to connect with the crowd. I mean, either way, you're just adding an O to shit. Oh, spaghettios. <laughs> oh, el ropo. If I can say spaghetti oh, and rope in that's Spanish it. and Italian. You can make them laugh. No, no, I didn't say that. I mean, that's that'll be the start to the, the bridging the language gap. Well, I don't know why we're friends. If you want me in a body bag to come back to the original issue. You desecrated a Danny Mullen artifact. God damn it. Listen, I I don't I'm not going to apologize for it. I, I think I look great. Consider me a freedom fighter. Oh, oh my <laughs> god. Oh, really? That okay. That you is wouldn't, what's the, where what's the name of your regime? To start with an H? It, it's so, so mad. Ugh. Shamaha? That's it. Wait, that's oddly <laughs> sounds like something else backwards. Let me see. Let me see something. It oddly like. sounds like something else backwards. <laughs> you want to give that a try, Dino? Let so it's see. not on on the mic. What does let that me, sound like? It's Shamaha. Oh, really? <laughs> interesting. Where did you get that name? <laughs> just came up with it. Dude. Oh, you just came up with it. It's I, interesting. It wouldn't. You wouldn't have been maybe like watching the news recently nah. and saw. Some people who would be called maybe terrorists, but they were some would call them freedom fighters. You didn't see them and then think of their name. Mm. No, I'm just I see Backwards. myself as a member of SMA. Uh -huh. And I, I think of my apartment as mm -hmm. a place called Stein Palace. Oh, really? And I see you as an occupier. Mm, I think it would be Stein last tap. I couldn't but yes, do that I get one. it. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah. too many letters. Okay, so I'm okay. Now uh, switched the two parts. Now, as a freedom fighter for Smaha, <laughs> yeah. uh, you <laughs> as a freedom fighter for Smaha, yeah, yeah. you uh, you see guys with shirts where the, with their sleeves a little cut off, and yeah. and what do you do? What is you put them in body bags? Well, I throw acid on their face first. You throw, okay, so you you de you deform them. Okay, mm -hmm. you destroy their face. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, mm -hmm. then what do you do? After that, I throw rocks at them. Okay. And then I will, if possible, disembowel them while holding a Koran. <laughs> oh, my God. Why is a Koran involved? That's odd. I've been doing some late night reading. Okay, it's, it's nothing to do with your religion or anything, huh? No. Oh, okay, cool. Purely secular reading. Interesting. What is this hate? Where does this hate come from? Did these, did the people with... Uh, cut off sleeves 
bang your chick or did they steal from your homeland or did they kick you out or something? Yeah, I would say around 1948, mm-hmm. people with cut off sleeves drove me out of my homeland. <laughs> really greasers, dude. I think that was the only hey, greaser. The, hey, sca- <laughs> scram, scram, <laughs> dick face. It came in motorcycles probably. Yeah. 1940. yeah. All right, uh-huh. cool. They, they kicked you out. They did. Of your, your family was in Orangevale already, probably. It was in Sacramento. Uh-huh. They kicked you out there. Uh-huh. So now you are a freedom fighter. For okay. sm- mm, for the and, and there's still a lot of these sleeveless guys around, huh? Not for long. Oh, wow. This uh, is your dream. So what is your dream? Give me your perfect world. As a devout American Muslim, I don't <laughs> want to say specifically what my vision is for a perfect American future. Mm. In the event that an FBI agent might be listening. Okay. But let me just say that your time is short, Landro. Oh, really? Can I actually say that my one of my professors at UCLA, who was super, he was an Israeli Jew who somehow had done a complete 180 and became a like a, like a pro-Palestinian, not freedom fighter, but he wore a Palestinian bracelet all the time and mm. just hated Israel. I looked him up out of curiosity. I wanted to see if he was weighing in on the situation. Can you type in right now? I think Leo's going to get a kick out of what this guy's doing now. Oh, God. Gabriel Peterberg. So Gabriel spelled the regular way. Nice. Not (laughs) not that way. For a guy who reads the Bible, allegedly, you think you would nail that. Here we go. Gabriel Peterberg. Let's look up some news on him. Wait, this was your professor? This was my prof. He really liked me, by the way. He's big time. Oh, my God. Accused of harassment? Sexual misconduct claims. Oh, my God. What did he do? He stuck his tongue in two grad students' mouths. Wow. Chicks, I'll specify. Were they uh, willing? Did he, like, force this on them? I don't know. He's not very it, attractive. It was, that's, that's a chick. Mm. It wasn't a criminal charge. That's not him. No, I know. I, okay. I, just, I saw him earlier. I, did, I just mentioned that he's not that attractive. Yeah, it wasn't criminal, Leo. So mm-hmm. who knows? I, but I guess he... Uh, I guess he, I mean, he was a fucking, he was a Jew, mm-hmm. but I think some of his game was a little Muslim. Oh, shit. There we go. So he probably wanted a side bitch. Can you, I mean, I'm sure he was married. Yeah, he was married. I'm pretty you sure. blame the guy. It was a little polygamous. It was a little bit, you know, you associate the Muslims with being pretty aggro. Yeah. The guys out there, you know, like the reform Muslims in America, what do they have? They have Lacoste polos on. Mm-hmm. They have gaudy gold jewelry. Yeah. Way too much cologne. Way too many chicks, dude. You get a lot of chicks, too. Do they? Yeah, I think so. I thought that was... Like those Persian Muslims, dude? Yeah, I mean... Own the clubs I and mean, shit. uh... Uh... I worked in nightclubs. Okay. For every pimp Persian guy, like Adam Fu, for instance, who's yeah, Jewish, not Muslim, yeah, yeah. there were a million Middle Eastern aggro dudes out there violating their religion by drinking alcohol, yeah. but then also going way too hard, putting the full course press on the ladies, full yeah, court yeah. press on the ladies and scaring them off. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think all, uh, I think Italians well known to do that too. Mm, yeah. Italians though, I mean the, uh, the mama mia, we are right. in America, the right. land of opportunity. That, that's yeah. dissipated. Now most Italians just look like white guys with dark hair. Yeah. Whereas Middle Eastern guys, they still like chick- the accent. I think chicks are a little they, they're a little racist still. Mm. Chicks are a little unconsciously racist towards Middle Eastern guys coming. Yeah, out. well, yeah, they kind of they know that. I mean, some Middle Eastern people think that women, some Middle Eastern men think that women might be second class citizens uh-huh. or something like that. I mean, they that's they one thing of, you share with the Middle Eastern. Well, men, I, I wouldn't say that on this podcast, you know, just in case we have some female fans watching. But, you know, let me say this about Leo. I'm going to stop you right there. You know how many times I've heard Leo just look up from his phone? Oh, God. When we're in Fresno, when oh, we're in yeah. Oklahoma, he's in mm-hmm. the back of the rental car mm. and he'll just get done shooting off a text to some woman and he'll mm. say, Danny. Sometimes when it comes to chicks, okay, you gotta go a little Middle Eastern on them. Okay, I have said you got to get a little mid- Middle Eastern on on a chick. I, what I mean by that is just be a stern, strong male, oh, yeah? and make decisions, and don't let them get behind the wheel of a car. Maybe don't let them. Yeah, make them get in their feminine. Don't let. Yes, I agree with things like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean if. 
Chicks weren't allowed to drive cars. Traffic would be a hell of a lot better out here. I guess it's just very much like it, it probably is mostly the chick's fault because it is people just not getting like changing lanes and staying in this and in, in keeping the same speed. That is what the concept behind. Yeah, I, isn't that's that, the concept. There should not be traffic. It shouldn't exist. Why is it when a chick throws on her blinker, she immediately has to hit the brakes, too? Yes, that's a, exactly it's just because it's too much to think about. I don't know. You know, they're supposed to be good at multitasking. Sure. Women sure. are. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because they got to be their brain is also it's going. Not only is it on the merge, but it's also on like, you know, maybe I want to have a baby or like fucking get some filler in my lips. Oh, or is it, like, is, oh, my <laughs> period, my, oh, my period. And so, right, so just, we've got. Yeah. That you would you say that encompasses everything that uh, women think about? Babies, lip filler, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Sucking dick or something. Mm, I'm be not nice. gonna go that far. You're be gonna nice. say that one, Mr. Be Muslim. Nice. I'm gonna leave that to you. I think it'd be nice. No, no, I think you know that was a sexist comment, Leo. Oh, you think so? That was a sexist comment. Oh, really? Let's get back to the three things that truly occupy a woman's mind. Again, babies, yeah. lip filler, period. Mm -hmm. And there's not much mental energy left over for Blinker gas. Blinker right. gas. Blinker gas doesn't exist. Blinker gas. They can't walk and chew bubble gum hardly. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Well, I maybe we can we can propose something. You know what I mean? We could maybe go to our local councilman and propose like maybe Mondays and Fridays. Women don't drive. I think it's a good start. LA. Yeah. Yeah. Just Mondays and Fridays. I imagine if just half the population of L.A., maybe more than half just was off the road. Be like COVID. Oh, Remember COVID? No traffic great, COVID? Man. Yeah, it was great. You can get to Woodland Hills in 30 minutes. Less. You could get to Woodland yeah, Hills? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember driving around, and I felt like uh, L.A. felt like Orangevale, my hometown, wow. where I was trained as a young somehow fighter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Or, Orangevale, I feel like, you know what I fear about streets like, uh, you know, Orangevale, though? People are just speeding on those, you know? going Way worse here. Way worse here. Way worse here. Really? Yeah, because... Here, every other citizen, and I, I love the Mexicans, but I will oftentimes walk into a gas station at 11 a.m., and there will be a Mexican man buying a 12-pack of Corona. Oh. Corona's a little nice. Modelo. Okay. You think, Budweiser. All right. You think they're getting by on the wheel after having a few? I know it. I know it. I live in a very Latino neighborhood, Leo. Mm -hmm. You visited my very Latino neighborhood, and you found a man at 4 a.m. one time passed out in the middle of the street in his truck. It was a nice Silverado, too. Yeah, it was a, it was a Mexican man. He, uh, he had a mustache. And um, I mean, I, you know, he could have been Filipino. His eyes were closed. Mm -hmm. But it was your neighborhood, so he's probably Mexican. Oh, like, is, uh, are the eyes the gateway to the Filipino soul? How would you know that? Are you Is that a slanty eye joke? No, it's not a sl slanty eye joke. I just didn't. I wasn't 100% sure. It's not a slanty eye joke. I'm just saying he had the same complexion that maybe a Filipino man would have. Sure. Okay, but and, and also... If, Blake Harthcock, another Rest example of a fucking a, a shitbag L.A. driver. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Not spe I'm not. I'm um, not. It was a Nissan. You think it was a Latino? Uh, I mean, if we're going by that sounds like an Asian. Yeah. You think, I'm, yeah. I'm just doing a really simple equation here. Could have been. Asian car, Asian man. Could have been. I feel like an Asian man would have stopped unless he had. I don't know. Maybe he was scared. He had a couple of drinks. Um, Dino, you want to go get our guest? What's up, everybody? Wanted to interrupt for a second to talk to you about a sponsor. Quip. What do they do? They age your mouth in order to keep it fresh for the ladies. And if you're a lady, of course, it could help you what the males do. But you want a fresh mouth when you go on a date, right? You guys have a lot of subscriptions to a lot of different things. But how many of them help you in your hygiene? How many of them help you get the ladies? Not a lot, I bet. So throw some shekels, quips way. And what do you get? Guys, let's talk about it. You get an electric toothbrush. I have it. It's it, Nine million people have this electric toothbrush and like it. I think it's more powerful, and it's better than the Sonic. <clears throat> you get a flosser, a water flosser, a water pick, for God's sakes, guys. These things are so much better than floss and cool and honestly really fun. I like to use mine in the shower. I don't know if that's too much information, but that's just what I'm telling you. And then, of course, mints and gum. All right? What do you need on a date? Mints. Or gum. What do you need when you go to a meeting and you want to impress people? Mints and gum. What do you need to just go to your parents' house? You don't smell like shit. Mints and gum, guys. All right. Now, uh, they have a, a cool deal for you guys. If you go to getquip.com slash LDS, that's getquip.com slash LDS right now, 
you'll get 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, and water flosser. That's your 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, and water flosser. And they're sleek. I got mine in copper. It looks dope. I will show you next ad we do for Quip. <clears throat> and getquip.com slash LDS. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash LDS. Quip, the good habits company. We have our, a guest on, a German comedian that... uh like hangs out with me and Danny or has before. And he's very interesting. He's an interesting man. Uh, we will meet him shortly. Drivers in LA are fucking awful, dude. Yeah. I get mad. The thing I don't like about terrible drivers too, is if you are driving a 2001, or excuse me, a 2021 Corvette, if you're driving a Porsche, you've earned the right to drive kind of like an asshole. Sure. First of all, you probably have very comprehensive insurance, which is going to cover any damage you do. Yeah. You pay a lot more than your fair share in taxes. And therefore, if you, I don't know, plow into a building, um, fucking accidentally swerve off the road and take out some plants on the median, you pay for that. I can't stand when I see a car that was made over 20 years ago with bagged windows and, and a, a dented fender. I don't like those guys ripping by me at 110 on the freeway. You haven't earned the right to drive like that. It doesn't matter what the, the race of the person in the car is, of course. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking yeah, purely yeah, socioeconomic. I get what you're saying. I think also, and look, and if you're think, you think that I'm just racist for thinking everyone in Danny's neighborhood is a Latino, no. Uh, you go outside of Danny's door sometimes, and there's straight like banda playing like, Straight like Mexican, like uh, um, not even Mexican American music. Like there's there's just an actual mariachi band playing outside of your house sometimes. I mean, yeah. you, we've heard it many times. It's weird that you live in a very white apartment complex yeah. as a as a brown dude, and I live in. Oh, I'm brown now. Well, you speak fluent Spanish. Okay, you are a brown dude. You're a person of color. I like that. All right. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna lean into that. I'm sorry. I forgot. Sometimes I forget. I'm gonna lean into it. Yeah, I am. Speak some Spanish. Uh, mucho, mucho gusto. Uh, me gusta que están mirando uh, nuestro podcast. Se llama el lío. Not as Danny good as my show. Spanish in the video this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love your <laughs> Spanish, dude. <laughs> Pero Sabado, dude. <laughs> Pero Sabado. But yeah, I live basically in, in Little Tijuana. Yeah. And I feel like you should be there. You would fit in know, better we, than me. We need to switch. Uh, yeah, I would fit in better where you are. And you would fit in better where I am. It's strictly Koreans, Danny. And you would love that. Mario is here. Mario. How are you, my friend? Yeah, that, your place is Koreans? I thought it's all white Good, people. It's, it's mostly white Koreans and the occasional uh, Latino, I guess. But no, it's really just whites and Koreans. Mm. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of Koreans. I didn't Danny know Bull. Koreans had taken over Danny, Park LeBray. If you sat down and had cigarettes in front of my, my place, you would see some, some beautiful Korean women that you would you do you would be happy there. You'd hmm. be happy in my building, mm. yeah. They're li living with their parents. Like, you know, they're young. They're college students. Mm, they're living with their parents. A lot of Korean college students living with their parents in Park Park. Oh, yeah. my God. If I had children and I had to raise them anywhere near Leandro Otavio, especially daughters. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm shirtless out there getting some sun. You know what I mean? Saying hello to the locals. Saying hello to their moms and their dads. Even them. Just another reason I want you in a body bag. You piece of shit. So what's up, Mario? What's going Mario. on? Mario, man. Good to see you all. Good Mario. to see you too. So the first time I met you, Mario, was at an LA open mic. Yeah. I saw you at the Laugh Factory after that. You're a man, you're a YouTuber. I um, yeah, I'm a YouTuber. And yeah. a stand-up comedian. That too. Similar and to you, actually, just different niche. Uh, yeah. A little little more little more gay, a little less extreme, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Less political. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little more gay is good, though, right? In Dude, your I'm case. European, you know. You, you sell yeah. a lot of tickets. We were wondering how many percentage-wise of the tickets you sell on the road, gay guys. Dude, actually not that many. It's mainly women. Oh, nice. It's interesting because that gay men, they watch my stuff, but they don't come to comedy shows. Because mm. gay men don't want, I don't know, I don't want to generalize. But yeah, yeah. I think gay We've men. We've done a lot of generalizing. You might okay. as well pile Wait, on. Yeah, All pile gay podcast. men yeah. don't like comedy. <laughs> gay men like, like <laughs> drag brunch stuff They like all that. have AIDS. Drag brunch exactly. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the drag, but they like drag brunch over stand up. Would you say I if we took so. a poll? If we took a poll, I would say most gay men would would uh, would also because they don't feel like represented, mm. you know. Because a lot of stand up is just like you know, like white trash straight comedians. Yeah, like yourself. Yeah, so we right just <laughs> white trash definitely. And then when when a comedian goes up and he is gay or he mm -hmm. starts talking about gay stuff, 
he, I feel like that does not go over well with the crowd because there aren't very many gay people in the crowd. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like, I feel like if you're a gay comedian and you're like leaning into gay material, I haven't seen that work live ever. That's a good point. Depending on where you go, there's some woke crowds that will support anything that's queer. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, and of for course. Example, yeah. I did a show with uh, Robin Tran, trans comedian yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just, you know, it's LA. So like, you know, any of that material worked very well. Yeah. Wouldn't probably go so well in Arkansas. Right? Yeah. It yeah. depends where you go. Oh, yeah. well, uh, yeah. we, you have more experience doing shows probably all over LA than we do. We do mostly the Ha Ha Comedy Club where Great. In, in, in North Hollywood, <laughs> dude, you can, that's still where you can be like, that's gay and eruption of laughter. Yeah, throughout yeah, the no, room, there's these know? little pockets, right? Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that place is definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah, it's one of them. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Pussy crowds are an issue. I went down to San Diego. Oh, yeah. This weekend. In San Diego, there were a lot of our fans out there, Dope. but half the crowd was also sort of uptight San Diego couples. Which you think of San Diego, you think San Diego is pretty loose. Yeah. More conservative, which usually means more yeah. open to offensive style comedy. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But people were getting pretty fucking tight. Maybe again, it's just relative to our shows yeah. where oh, God. even though it's like 90% Mexican, you still feel like you're in a Klan rally sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, like, dude, I... If I just went up there and goose stepping in full they would die German laughing, regalia, yeah. they would I would get a applause break. You'd support this, of course. Uh, I'm listen, I, I have a lot of jokes about like the German you know what's funny about German material? I have a lot of jokes about like having a Jewish girlfriend, like my fiance is Jewish. Uh -huh. oh, and shit. I lean into that shit. And it goes so well with wow. Jewish crowds. I've done that material at a Jewish wedding. Yeah. Oh, and wow. it always does well. It's so it's wow. mind blowing sometimes. You would like Austin, Texas though. Oh. Because Austin, they don't give a fuck. Mm. Like when you go to the mothership, mm -hmm. I've been I've went to Austin a few times now for comedy. It's the level of like it's just the default is just ten times darker and edgier, and that's what's kind of encouraged in Austin. Wow! Mm -hmm. So it really depends on where you go. Oh shit, we got to do a show in Texas. Texas, you would, I think, you would really go well. I, what's, yeah. I, I found too that the brighter the room is, the worse offensive material goes over because mm. isn't that funny right uh, the yeah. laugh factory in la and the laugh factory i did in san diego this week yeah you can the audience can see each other the crowd is lit which oh, takes away the anonymity brighter. i thought in terms of skin color <laughs> <laughs> that might or also check out not because uh, it's usually white women who you know get offended about stuff on behalf of it, oh on behalf now, right it, it is white women yeah. yes of course but yeah. i'm talking about the haha -ha is like dracula's fucking dark uh the, yeah. it's dark, antechamber yeah. dude can't see like, anything you there. can't see anything no. so there's just this anonymity in this crowd it's like the crowd morphs into hyenas when right. the house Got lights it. go down <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas at the fucking laugh factory dude you feel like you're in a high school auditorium at yeah, noon. yeah, yeah. it's oh, so no, fucking it's bright this is bright you can see everybody which is cool sometimes but also yeah it can it can it can be challenging with absolutely that, yeah. what's yeah. like the uh where have you seen like uh it's a place that you struggle with comedy as far as live. Is there a certain club always or? Well, I think uh, anything uh, Bay Area is tough. You know, Bay like um, tough, okay. my stuff is not even that edgy. I saw your shit and I respect that how you walked mm -hmm. up there. It was just like edgy and you didn't give a fuck, yeah. which is great. And I think there's some comics. It also depends on how big you are, right? Once you're on level of like Bill Burr, yeah, you yeah. can do a lot more edgy stuff because that's your fans. Yes. And you can kind of justify it. Yeah. But when you're not as established, people are going to, you know, it's harder to to let that slide, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, but Bay Area, yeah. Seattle was super woke. Oh, wow. I had like a joke about, I don't know, it's just so stupid. I talk about like turtles having plastic straws. Mm -hmm. Like the only thing you should be fighting is plastic straws. And they got so like up to, not the turtles, bro. Oh, <laughs> like the God, tightest dude. crowd. That sounds, yeah. that sounds unbelievably shitty. Yeah. It was, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely when we do the haha, it's so many of our fans. Yeah. It that again, we could say absolutely anything. Yeah. Have you gone? Have you done shows outside of? Because I feel like your demo mm -hmm. would be, I think, also a little bit more middle America, South. Mm -hmm. Have you done shows? Because you make these YouTube videos and like remote, like Bakersfield and these like yeah. redneck places. Mm -hmm. Have you done shows outside of LA? Because yeah. yeah. with your style, did, I think it would just no. New, New York was great. More. New York was great. Yeah, we did New York. We did Sacramento, but that's his hometown, so that was kind of like a yeah. cheat code. Yeah. But uh, I but, haven't done that many shows where. It's just a, a room of people who don't know who I am. They yeah. usually know who I am. Yeah. And it, yeah. it is more challenging when it's a fucking, when I wasn't announced on the lineup and I just hop on. Yeah. yeah. 
But it's also dope. You know, there's something beautiful about having to connect with strangers. Oh, yeah. Because I've kind of been comfortable. I've been touring with one person. That she had a very uh, Zhao Ying and she had a very Chinese or like Asian crowd, yeah. which I got very comfortable with that because I'm, you know, it goes very well. But I kind of want to do a fully black room. Dude. Just to, as a comedian, connect with strangers that are different too. Yeah. My that favorite crowd cool. so far is Mexican crowds. Oh, yeah. yeah they like those too. Good time. My Dude, favorite they Latino laugh, crowds. They laugh, yeah. They yeah. love to have fun, uh, yeah. man. They're the best. We like, and a lot of our fan base is Latino. We love that. When you, I heard Mario, and I want you to verify this before I say it as fact on the on the, the <laughs> sure. show. I heard that you would walk out for the the Chinese crowds with your eyes taped up in a kimono. <laughs> Oh Listen, God. I'm trying to just please the audience, you know, whatever I can. I'm a German, so I'm trying to make peace with everybody, you know. If they're Japanese, they're part of the uh, the the, yeah. the Axis powers, you know, so we can we can do that as Germans. But I feel like yeah. you could really help help our young German team here, the editing and uh, producing team. Austin and Dino are both German. Wait, they could have uh, they you know they didn't Germans? take advantage of their genetics like you did though. You know what I mean? No, nah, just just like <laughs> biologically German. Oh, so yeah. you got some German We're from in you. Texas. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Do you but want some more I German? I did take in German you? in high school. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? I wanted to tell you a second about a sponsor, Prize Picks. That's uh, a lot of fun. All right, especially during football season. All right, it's the most fun I've had winning up to twenty-five times your money this football season. You just select two. Or more players pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. And cool thing about uh, placing entry in prize picks, I've done it about three minutes before game time because it only takes about 60 seconds to put in, so which is pretty fun. It's really easy to play. So that's uh, one of the things I love about it. Uh, this week, I'm going to go um, Justin Jefferson for less than 100 yards and Lamar Jackson for more than one passing touchdown. All right. And your boy's going to win. All right. Let's see what happens with the prize picks reboot policy. Your entries stay and play. Even if one of your players gets injured, by the way, for NFL games and CFB top 25 matches. If you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. Isn't that kind of dope for you little Guys that are already probably fans of prize picks. Um, it's a lot of fun. Makes the game like 10 times more fun, as you know. So this is what they're going to give you guys. Go to prizepicks.com slash LDS and use code LDS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. You put in 100 bucks, they're going to put in. They're going to give you 100 bucks. It's pretty nice. All right. That's prizepicks.com slash LDS and use code LDS for a first deposit match up to $100. All right. Go have fun. You so let's talk about this because you really do brand yourself i thought you were fucking gay when i first <laughs> yeah. saw your stuff <laughs> not just gay. i asked him to fucking the podcast. gay fucking yeah, gay no, yeah no, we no. talked about this at length on the podcast yeah, yeah, we Dude, did. every clip i cut from our podcast was yeah. basically about that because it's so fun you were like you asked like five times you were like no i'm straight i just gotta get you like yeah. but are you guys dating are you, are you bisexual do you yeah, have you ever bus like, what's <laughs> how did you get into the niche of entertaining gay dudes on YouTube. Oh, I can guess that it's you're a, you're a model, you're a professional, exactly. a runway model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. sort of like you, when you first started out on social media, it was a bunch of gay guys it following was, your it Instagram. It was eighty percent gay dudes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. when you were at your happiest. Yeah, my shirt. No, I was not a big nut. Okay, I was honestly, I was pretty happy. I was. <laughs> <laughs> They're very supportive. Dude, I, I, I bet they are. They are. I bet it has nothing to do with them wanting to put their unclipped <laughs> penises up your asshole. Well, yeah, why do they have to be unclipped? I think you know, these, all these gay men are uncircumcised. They were following because me. Because you're an Italian <laughs> ape and probably a lot of other Italian apes saw you as attainable. Oh, wow. uh, gay so, Italian uh, apes. Gay Italians follow you. That's a that's an even more niche down. It's no, very yeah. niche. I love that. I right. am uncircumcised. Aren't you too? Is it, well, we talk, I got circumcised yeah, we talked when I was 19 it. years that's old. That's right, dude. That's crazy. For a Turkish girl I was dating. Yeah. Tell me, and I know you guys have probably... That's right. I forgot we talked about I know you guys have probably had this conversation on the podcast. I have another friend who got his foreskin clipped later on in life because he kept getting UTIs. Uh, it was really? smelly down Ooh. there. The Bible said it's he was bullshit. unclean and he was going to it's, hell, it's such which bullshit. I think you should heed that. This but is such bullshit. Leo maintains that the sex is more pleasurable with the foreskin. You've had both. What, do you what say you? Oh, 100% with the foreskin. Damn yeah, it. With, yeah, no, no, no. Just, you, this man has but seen both sides. Wow. I've seen both sides and I did it for science, dude, because yeah. I was like, I have, I've had sex before getting circumcised and I was like, I'm going to do this for science. Fuck yeah. <laughs> right? That is awesome. Man. Um, yeah, it's for, for an empirical field study. No, do you I've miss had, it? 
Your foreskin? Uh, you know, I do mainly because when I was in Germany, nobody was circumcised. So mm -hmm. I thought by getting circumcised, I'd be kind of like like a cool kid, you know? Just sure. Different, like or they put rebel. you in a camp. Or they put you in <laughs> <laughs> what if that was the new one? known to do that. <laughs> what if that was the new one? Well, well you now, now Germany. Would you call me out? Pro, pro, um, I would sell you Israel. out. You would sell me out. Yeah. yeah. Germany yeah. is? Oh, very much. They're they compensating. Oh, well, yeah. So keeps, them, keeps them out of Germany. They're, they're fucking Joe Biden now saying, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Fucking, oh, shit. After fucking locking people up. No, it's not Germans. We, um, we have a, I love how we switched from like gay to circumcision to like fucking German guilt. But oh, well, I want to hear more about the circumcision. I'm not done. Okay. So, yeah, like, first, how yeah. much better? How much better uh, with well, foreskin? I can tell you that I uh, when I had my foreskin, I came about like 38% faster. Fuck, that's a yeah, lot percent faster. That's a lot faster. And bro. it's not, it, depending how long it takes you to come, it might be too fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. So of if you're a quick shooter, I'm, I recommend you getting circumcised, you know? That's because a good point. If you have the yeah. premature ejaculation, get circumcised. Oh, well, I want to come faster. So can I get my foreskin back? You want? Yeah. <laughs> well, things like, Wait, like, how long do you last on average? It depends, but it can be an issue for me. For real? Yeah, oh my it can God. be. I never well, no. had that problem. Okay, so this is, for example, a lot of guys that are circumcised, all my friends, including him, like a blowjob will take forever, right? Like it would be like mm. a very, you have to really just face fuck a chick. Like, <laughs> How just, dare you? I'm sorry, no. dude. I'm is not that? I'm not a wannabe Muslim like you. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I So I do not treat women like dogs. Oh, Leo wow. Leo's thinking about converting. <laughs> I, um, so if it's, if it's a new chick and if I haven't been jerking off, constantly the day of or day before which is rare that i haven't been <laughs> yeah you know because dude like this weekend speaking of holocaust this weekend was a holocaust of my semen oh spilt wow. senselessly God, all over it. the floor beautiful I, are you guys monetized <laughs> sometimes <laughs> no yeah. i was um, not but i jerked off so <laughs> many times this weekend semen. that if i got blown this weekend by like the hottest girl that mm. Megan have, Fox, that heaven above, know, yeah. no, that, see, she's not I, even the hottest, but th her face, it would be, it would be a good blowjob. Maybe sure. when she was in the Transformers. Sure, movie. Transformers, Megan Fox. Megan Fox, Transformers, Megan Fox, blowing you. It would take me until um, the awkward stumbling sign off of the podcast we usually do. Oh, nice. From oh, now man. until then. What? About an hour and 15 more minutes oh, poor to cut girl. to get off after how much I jerked off. Poor but girl. if I had my foreskin, I think that would go a lot quicker. It would. How, how, is it a per, like how many times per day do you jerk off on average? What are we talking? This weekend? Yeah. Dude, I think, oh. I, I, think I jerked off six times. Whoa. Six times? Yeah. You know, it's so funny you say this because I just talked to my uh, new Iranian videographer. Oh, wow. And he told me about semen retention. He's been doing it for a long time. I don't trust guys in semen retention. Listen, I never thought about it, but I thought it was... I don't my, trust Iranians either. My focus was... Maybe that's what... <laughs> My focus is that I've been I've been retaining my semen, right? Yeah. So if I got a if I got a blowjob from you know hypothetically from any of you guys, sure, it, we'd be like we'd be Most efficient. Likely Dino. We'd be very efficient, you know. Oh, Shaking Dino, he's he'll do it. He's yeah, gay. Yeah, he's yeah, homosexual. Yeah. Man. Would you get a blowjob from a dude? No, from in a jail. Guy? In jail. In jail. Listen, I think <laughs> truthfully, like I'm not gay, but the technique speaks for itself, and it's not about sexuality at that point. I see. In I, like, I got blowjobs from modeling jobs, you mm. know, like to, really? in order to get a modeling but job. From guys? From guys, yeah. Wow. Dino, Dino, yeah, Dino yeah. thumbs up or thumbs down. Is that gay or not? Hey, <laughs> That's gay? It's not gay. It's not gay. That's it was a, business a movie. Wait, it was business. Wait, wow, Hollywood. dude. How bad do you want this? Job? You know, if was you wanna... it Hollywood or was it in Germany? It was in uh, Italy. Oh, my God. Of course, York. bro. The Italians. Yeah. You go to suck and my dick. I will and suck at your dick. Can I suck in Asia? And Asia. And, and LA. Oh, <laughs> shit. Everywhere. I'm kidding. No. The one guy was actually in, was in, in uh, Milan, oh, Italy. Wow. And he was like, Mario, I'm, I'm going to give you a big magazine cover, but uh, you let me suck your dick. And you're like, oh, So I was sure. like, I was like, what? Magazine cover? Are we talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, it, was, it was a business decision. Do you want to... So you are... It sounds like you're not that sympathetic toward the Me Too movement. And you understand the little quid pro quo <laughs> is uh, sometimes Dude, it's good a, to go. It's a, it, listen, it's a thin line. I'm like struggling with that too because when does sexual assault start and when does a consensual business Correct. transaction begin, right? In Milan, apparently. In Milan. <laughs> it's where it happens. Where? <laughs> No, but that line is thin, man, because there's a whole thing. I don't know if you heard about this, but Abercrombie and Fitch had a thing kept come out where the CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch, the mm -hmm. ex-CEO, hired this photographer to recruit young models to have sex parties. Oh. And it was consensual, but they were encouraged to perform sexual acts. Is it a guy wow. CEO and chick models? No, it's all men. All gay. In modeling, oh, let me tell you one thing. In modeling, the most sexual 
harassment assault that happens is towards men. Of course, yeah. It, it, no, I mean, it's okay. People, I've heard the, the crazy stories, bro. Yeah. yeah, no, it is really. I mean, you've maybe experienced some because you. I have like experienced some, right? Yes. So I've experienced some. It's, um, it's why run, not me? It's run why by gay men. Well, you know, yeah. If you haven't experienced sexual harassment from guys, it means you're not hot enough. I'm sorry. It's true. Yeah, sometimes I, <laughs> I, uh, that's right, dude. Now, again, you've been sexually harassed too. Oh, I've been fucking sexually assaulted in, and not many a the gay bar, but in at least. Oh, in a gay bar. Well, nice. Congrats, man. Thank you. You call it. I I have no sympathy toward men who get sexually harassed Dude. or have put sexual pressure into their career. Yeah. You, as a guy, if you, you know, could reasonably have a chance at defending yourself in a fight, there is no sexual harassment. Uh, I don't know, man. Because like, you're a big guy, dude. Yeah, I have no guy, sympathy. But I'm going to tell you one thing, dude. When you're in that situation, which I've been in, where they come, like people would literally like, I was doing an underwear photo shoot. You're in a very vulnerable, like sexualized position. You're 19 years old. Uh -huh. You're insecure. You're a young model going to a different country. You uh -huh. know what I mean? I come from a small town in Germany. Especially Italy, where they're all fucking animals. Exactly, okay. right? <laughs> <laughs> He's Italian. He's Italian. Yeah. Okay. No, but even New York, dude. New York happened to me where like one dude was just like literally pull my... He was like, can I adjust your underwear? Yeah. Oh, shit. And he'd come up to you. I'd be like, sure, adjust my underwear. Dude, that was new. It was my first time in America. And he would like pull my underwear down would grab my dick, would lengthen it, right? Oh would like kind of pull on it, lengthen it, push it down again, close my underwear. Sounds like he did you a oh. fucking solid. Dude, it was like, he, he lengthened it. I was like, I was like, cheers, bro. But dude, in that oh, moment, I didn't shoot. say anything. I was just shocked, you know? And sometimes it's hard. How big's your cock, Mario? Uh, it's a solid, it's a solid. It's actually two, two, two to eight inches. Two, not, not Is eight. it average? Two to, it's, yeah, it's, it's a solid. Like it's a, not a, gr I'm a grower though, right? Me so too, yeah. At modeling shoots, it's, um, it's, uh, fluffers on strike. I just seen this. I know, this, yeah. This Dan, so we just video. You should have used Leo's this mouth so instead of that guy's fingertips. Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just, you got like an average cock. Yeah. Me too. I'm an yeah. average guy. This, yeah. He's got a small one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. no, no. It's above average. Above average. Yeah, it's yeah, proportional yeah. is what I say. I yeah, told yeah. me. On the no, we, we, talked we talked about my about dick on the pod. It's, it's a good pod. Go check out Mario's pod, dude. <laughs> dude, the first thing we asked, the first thing I was yeah. like, hey, Leo, welcome to the podcast. How much yeah. are you packing right now? Oh, I'm like, you know, not, not much. Not much. Yeah. No, I'm but it's, it's, I want to say this. But. Like, as man, it's sometimes... You know, it's fucked up when when you do when you're grown men. I would agree with your statement, right? When you're like, you know, in your mid twenties or something. But when you're very young mm -hmm. and you're being pressured and they're telling you, "Hey, we're gonna book you for this job," and you don't know what you can and can't do, and I was in that situation. It's difficult, man. You know? Mm. Yeah, but being a fucking underwear model is like, who needs them? It's a privilege. <laughs> it's like, um, it, it's <laughs> who needs them. Yeah, it's Listen, like um, we sell underwear, motherfucker. <laughs> it's um, I, I was thinking about an example of this today where um, I uh, oh, fuck. I had, a, I had a perfect analogy for why I do not sympathize with a 19-year-old Mario getting his fucking cock grabbed. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> let me. Uh, it's like fucking Jeff Bezos gets divorced, loses half his money. Boo hoo! We still got fucking fifty eight billion yeah, more seriously. dollars. Well, yeah. but the difference is that I was broke. You know what I mean? And the, the the reason why I was in those situations is because photographers would be like, "Yo, Mario, if you do this, you can maybe you know you get this magazine cover, you get this job, so you get Damn. like pressured into it." And it's just hard to. And I never said yes. It's like. You know, what, where does consent end? I was like, no, I'm not comfortable with this. And then they were like, literally, they said, they told me as they were pulling my pants down, they'd be like, Mario, this is the fashion industry. You oh have to be more open-minded if you want to succeed in this industry. Oh my so God. they gaslit me saying that I'm from yeah. a small town, that it's my fault, right? They blamed me for not wanting to consent to whatever they said. Mm. Yeah. And even after I said, I'm not comfortable with this, like I didn't punch him in the face, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it needs almost, you need that level of reaction. And people say, you know, if it's not a clear yes, right. it's a no. Yeah, that's yeah. what they say. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what if they say that the way to get rid of a bully is to walk over him and punch him right in the nose? I was, mm. I'm reading Elon Musk's book right now, and that's what he says. Like, that was his oh, yeah? policy for dealing with. You should have, the first guy who adjusted your cock in your front door, <laughs> you should have bent him over and fucked him so hard in the <laughs> oh, ass. Oh, my God, dude. That your reputation spread through the fashion industry. They're like, don't, don't fuck with do that it. guy. Then everybody would do it. Well, they would all do it. They would all love that. But I mean, I'm talking like you leave the guy bruised. You fucking, you, what's it called when you're out? asshole falls out, mm. anal fucking prolapse. If prolapse. you prolapse to their oh anus. Oh my God. If you dude. prolapse to dude's anus, Dino, oh. cover up your chub, Dino. He's, he's bulging over there. If, 
Dude. And then you would have been good. <laughs> he loves his job right now. Dude, so it seems, modeling um, would probably be the perfect gig for like a, a gay man then. Huh? It's, it's in a way, I guess. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're into that band, but like, I think it's even, still being pressured to do something you might. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and it's not like hot gay guys hit on you of you course. know what i mean it's creepy it's exactly fat, it's like yeah. if you, it's the equivalent of like a really unattractive woman hitting on you who's like you know yeah. 20 years old it's probably you, yeah. different because if you're straight that's still infinitely better than an old fat gay man yeah like i would get leo and i after a couple of drinks would get blown by basically any girl yeah mm. but guy it's a different story mm. huh I don't know, dude, because like I've seen some kind of gross looking women too, you know. I feel like gay men take care of themselves. So I think they age pretty well, generally. You yeah, know? but maybe it's Fashion because you're European too. and you grew up instead of on the baseball diamond, you grew up in yeah. a techno club. Yeah, I think yeah, you're a little bit more open minded to this. No, 100%. Dude, I'm telling you this. It's so weird, like growing up in Europe. Like it's not even. Like, it's yeah. so funny when we had the podcast, we talked about this. And yeah. we we're like, oh, this guy, you know, my best friend had this story where basically he was trying to have a threesome with this girl, him and his buddy. And then the girl, like, they were so aroused, they both were hard and about to have sex with her. And then she was like, I can't do this and walked out. And then they were both in the room with their hard cocks. And they were like, bro, I mean, we, you know, what are we going to do about this now? And then they just, you know, they kind of joked each other off. So that's something that would be gay. And then I told them <laughs> at, least they, was at like, least they had restraint. They had just, restraint. A hand, just, a hand, <laughs> just a hand job. It's yeah. just, what are we going to do? <laughs> in Europe though, like that's the thing. Ronaldo, there was like me, there's been like stories of him hooking up with like trans chicks for a long yeah. time and nobody even gives a fuck, dude. Why? I mean, yeah. why, why would, why they? would they? Why would honestly, they? Honestly, fuck it. There, like, honestly, we're, we don't, Europeans, it's true. Like, yeah. I don't want to generalize because there's European countries like Hungary where they're going to hang you if you're gay. Yeah. But generally, we're a bunch of straight dudes who just look super gay and act super gay. But we're not really necessarily <laughs> yeah, gay exactly. Know? I love that. It's like dude. Dino, dude. He looks and acts super gay. Uh, he acts gay. Dude. Are you European, Dino? <laughs> <laughs> you know, homophobia is pretty gay, though, dude. But if homophobia you are homophobic, so if, you're, if you're afraid of it, man, like you're probably gay. Why would you be, if anybody who's comfortable in the sexuality would not be offended about anything gay? Exactly. Why the fuck would you, you know? Exactly. It's exactly. so funny. I had this guy in uh, in Miami did a show and I had some jokes about going to a gay gym like Crunch Gym West Hollywood. I make some jokes about that, how I love going to gay clubs because, you mm -hmm. know, I get so many compliments. People want to spot me. And then this dude was yelling out in the crowd. He was like, no gay, none of that gay shit, bro. Wow. You know what I mean? That was like, you know, like black man, stuff, probably black man. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. And again, I want to generalize. I want <laughs> Danny, to generalize. What would you <laughs> say, dude, how do you handle that heckle? But how did you handle that heckle? Cause that, that might happen oh, to I, us I, one day. I, whenever this happens, I, 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 um, I, I hit on him. <laughs> Because that's yeah. the funny shit ever. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, the yeah. funny shit well. to hit on the yeah. most masculine oh, alpha straight dude. dude. That's yeah. So, funny, so I looked yeah. at him and I was like, uh, oh, "You don't like that tank top? It's good for pec bounce." I started bouncing my titties for him and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And then you know the crowd was obviously they, they loved that. that. Yeah. They loved that yeah. But then it was it was, was kind of crazy. He wouldn't stop and shit like it was. It that's was wild. fucking wild. But it's like he wants to get fucked by a dude so bad. Exactly. Yeah. By a German six foot three yeah, alpha man like myself. Yeah. To heckle that way. Like, why would you be, you know... Dude, there's enough of that gay shit. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's really funny, though, dude. That's fucking... Leo, heckle, heckle Mario a little bit as the black guy. Hey, man, none of that gay shit, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's really... Dude, that's, I can see that happening. I don't know that it would happen at the haha, -ha, but uh, I could, I'm could. i sure there's a show. Oh, Miami there, would happen. Florida, Miami, Florida, there we Florida, go. This will happen, yeah. Florida, that would so, happen. Florida, Florida. Yeah. I want to hear more about this because this is so fascinating that you've been... I'm just going to use the word me too. Yeah, he's been me. You, you've yeah. been you've been or sexually assaulted, harassed. He could me too someone. You yeah. could. You I, I earned a right to now yeah. take the power back. You're and, a part of the me too movement. Yeah, I've, so I've, I've thought about becoming a photographer and now, Ooh. you know, taking advantage of young models yeah, to kind of yeah. pass it on to the next generation. The yeah. <laughs> yeah, complete the circle. Well, I, I got to hear the about circle this of life, you know, <laughs> the circle. The circle. Of life. Yeah. This is so rare to me that I just I want to hear more about it because yeah. All you hear is the stories from women. Sure. And as as men, I feel like, because a lot of the stories that you hear from women, they had been exaggerated. And as a guy, you sort of understand the male plight. So you're biased. You're like, ah, she's probably lying. Like, ah, she's full of shit. That didn't happen. Because we understand how hard it is to go out and have to be the guys that seduce the women. We're the ones who have to make the approach and we have to escalate the sexual situation. True. So we're always biased when we hear chicks me too stories, unless they're egregious, unless yes, they're sure. like unambiguously rape and assault, like, 100%, yeah. like Ron Jeremy or Harvey Weinstein. But yeah. you as a guy, 
and you're not using any names here. You're, it doesn't sound like you have anything to gain from sharing these stories. No, and that's no. why it's so fascinating to me. No, I like sharing the stories. I because, love the openness, uh, dude. That's awesome. No, dude, I want to share this stuff because I mean, I, I I'm actually writing. A, I had a huge mushroom experience, like uh, heroic six grams, where right. I also realized that Jesus. it's almost like yeah, we can get into that. It was kind of crazy, but I realized that the reason why I shared this, I made a full YouTube video talking about a sexual assault. Like I was raped by a dude. Wow. Like, I was unconscious, I was drugged, and I was oh, raped by a dude. damn, that's crazy, bro. Dino, was it you? It was him. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> <laughs> it was a, so it tell was, us about this. This is fucking wild. This is so, crazy, bro. First of all, I want to preface, the reason why I'm sharing this stuff is uh -huh. not to... Because I'm not gaining anything from it. I'm not suing the guy. Mm. I'm not gaining... I mean, sure, views on... But I'm not monetizing it in any way. But I'm sharing it because I think it's important for men to speak up about that stuff. Because the narrative is that men cannot share their emotions uh, in America, especially, you know, if men feel like they cannot speak up about something that bothered them, you know? So I think it's just important because yes. I know so many fucking young models that will never speak up about shit that happened to them because they think it makes them gay or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bit by Dave Chappelle, which is so funny. He was like, um, uh, six men in Texas came forward because they've been raped by a dude. And when you know that's when six guys, six guys in Texas speak up about this openly, you know there must be thousands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that's a tough phone call for us to make. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a great bit here. And it's so true. That's why I want to talk about this. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. So you want to hear the story? Yeah. Yes. The rape? yeah. Friend, yes. All right. So the story was um, I had a modeling job. It was actually in China. Oh, and it was shit. for a big, um, a huge... So in China, there's some individuals that are just ridiculously wealthy. He was yeah. like a billionaire, mm -hmm. right? He owns half the skyline of Shenzhen, like a city in China, Fuck. and also Shanghai. Comes from a lot of old money, you know, like a dynasty type of- Sorry money. to fast forward a little bit right now, Mario. At least yeah. his dick was small. <laughs> God damn it, you, you killed my punchline, You killed my fucking you asshole! You asshole! You asshole! You was like, God damn it, dude, punchline. you piece- Oh shit! <laughs> you knew what he meant you, China. You, you knew what it was a job in China. You immediately it. went there. Damn oh my god! god. Now I feel like a fucking asshole. asshole. That was like, funny. That was awesome. That was I awesome. feel like a fucking asshole. <laughs> you had to. You, your face. I saw you were just like your fucking ADHD. Couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. Like, oh, oh, it's my thing, China. <laughs> oh my god! You just couldn't hit a whole bank of racial stereotypes. Yeah. He was like, I got a racial stereotype. I got a yeah. Oh, my thing, China. I love that, dude. That's so funny. But yeah, that's. I mean, basically, I have to tell the story. Now, like, I want to continue either. I'm gonna like fast forward this billionaire. He was like after the job and you can no, you don't have to fast forward. No, I don't know. Since I ruined your punchline, <laughs> no. I'm since I ruined the punchline, we <laughs> might as well hear the whole story now. How much time you got? All right. Ah, yeah. No, take so, your time. Bro. All right. So I did this modeling job, and this very rich, wealthy individual wanted to have dinner with me after the photo shoot. He was the owner of the company I worked for. Clothing company. Clothing company. Yeah. Mm. And I did a commercial for them, and uh, it was very well paid. Huge production. How much does an ad like that pay, roughly? <sighs> Depend. I mean, it's not as women are overpaid. I just want to clarify that women get paid That's two right. or three times more than men for the really? same exact job. Yeah. Wow. There's a pay gap in this country, and Bullshit. we need to talk about it. We Models do. pay gap. Bullshit. <laughs> it's the only. It's be the able to only industry party. where yeah. men are actually underpaid. I feel like you know. Yeah. Only fans and modeling, probably the only two, and yeah. maybe sex work. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Uh, maybe like five grand for like a campaign, mm -hmm. but I did so many jobs for like a regular job, like a full day e-com catalog photo shoot, maybe like 800 bucks. Mm. But you pay tax, you have to go to castings. There's like right. an agency There's fee, 20%, yeah. depending where you are. So you got so, about five grand for this trip to China? Yeah, something like that. Okay, mm. yeah. all expenses paid plus five grand. In exactly, your something like that. Yeah, but mm. then in reality, it's like probably like closer to like two and a half with like agency yeah. and tax and everything. Of which, which is like, sounds tight, but I feel like that was a pretty big gig. And yeah. to only get like 2,500. And also to think about this, to get this job, you have to think about it. Sure, it sounds good to get one of these jobs, but they don't come very often. In my case, I was moderately successful working, you know, but um, you have to go to about 20 castings mm -hmm. to land one gig. That's right. Yeah. Meaning that if you break it down to an hourly wage, it's you you might as well just drive for Uber, honestly. I think they should pay for, uh, yeah. for castings. I think I think SAG should be paying for cast, castings. That would make it a lot better. Yeah, it's just, yeah, man, it's 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 weird because it's, uh, the, the poor pro you have to go to fitting sometimes. Mm -hmm. Then you have to, you only get the job if you let a dude suck your dick. So it's like just a <laughs> bunch of like costs. That the you dick, suck tax. <laughs> dick suck tax. Dick right? suck tax, bro. Exactly. Are, are there, I'm not, I'm not trying to joke here, do you get access to a lot of top, Shelf pussy though oh, when yeah. you're a model. Well, I would say yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So sometimes I was in circles though where a lot of the parties that I was invited to were gay parties, and mm -hmm. they would invite women. They would just only invite very wealthy um, individuals, photographers, mm -hmm. um, princes from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, they don't want girls gay. there. They don't want yeah. girls there. They don't want girls. But there. 
whenever there was industry parties, like my agency had like parties and I had like a lot of, you know, girlfriends that were in them. They were models yeah. with my agency or yeah. I would live at model apartments, which is a whole wow. thing. It's wild. That's man. a real thing, bro. Yeah, it's Hot a real chicks. thing. Dude, well, model, it's all models in an apartment building, dude. Yeah. And you and Mario in there. And yeah, yeah. Mario in well, there, dude. With a stroke in his German. formerly circum for formerly uncircumcised penis. Yeah, so that's I don't right, know yeah. what time this was. Um, so you are, you're banging, close. you bang some hot model chicks. Well, I have, but I'll be honest, I feel transparent. I mean, after I was raped, I became a little asexual. Mm. So I didn't really have sex with anybody for a while. Damn. I also got my heart broken by this girl, this Argentinian girl in yeah, New York. Yeah, told me about this. Yeah. I think, man, I fell in love with her so hard, and that was when I was modeling. Beautiful was girl. Kind of hand so beautiful. Mm -hmm. The most intense, 10, like maybe 10, 14 days of pure fucking ecstasy and like oh, wow. being in love. Dude, we were laying in bed, looking into each other's eyes, it's and we said, we can't touch each other anymore. And we said like the rule that we cannot touch each other for wow. two hours. So for two hours, Damn. we just looked into each other's souls wow. and couldn't touch each other. So this something models would do. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, this is some gay model this shit. Is, this is an awesome model <laughs> shit, bro. That's a real, you're so beautiful. They're just looking at but, each but other. Dude, like, so I've funny. been in relationships where like that, where I completely lose control. Yeah. And like, yeah. like one of my first girlfriends at UCLA yeah. was so beautiful to me. Yeah. I'm not sure that she was objectively to everybody else, but I was her slave, dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. My heart was hers to stomp all over. And she yeah. took advantage of that. Oh, so was that rape, yes. Was so that what rape, happened? Rape and broken heart. And then Yeah, so But I want exactly. to hear about the fucking model girl. What happened right, to her? The model girl is like what happened is we were so Mario is a treasure trove he of is stories. A, dude, dude. So many. We'll have, <laughs> yeah. oh, we'll have to be on again, bro. You, you come oh, on again. Yeah. You gotta suck my dick to get on again. I don't do that. I, I guess doesn't I, do that anymore. I let other people you suck my dick. You can suck his dick and yeah. be on the pod. Dude. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> or or I'll, both, I'll outsource it to Dino. Uh, Dino will do it for you. Yeah, Dino will do it for you. <laughs> I love the whole pack. He's just, all, all that, whatever. Look, he's just shaking his head the yeah, whole time. Dino, oh, Dino can, can you get on camera real quick? Yeah. How dare you wear that shirt Yeah, today? what the fuck is that? Of all days to wear that shirt, dude. Look at this, Mario. What is, what is this? What does it say? Look, read it. It's fucked up. You didn't read my shirt, bro? I can't read it. Rape? It yeah. says rape. It's kind You're of wearing a rape shirt. What the Dude, fuck is You guys wrong? have like the most on theme. Like you have a fluffers yeah. on strike. Yeah. You guys were like, let's reignite his trauma. Let's see how we can uh, yeah. like break this guy open. <laughs> it's it's oh, poor oh, Mario. Oh, I, I have an alien getting raped by two guys in space. Suit. And you have like the Soviet <laughs> Union, the country Germany invaded, and then shit went yeah. south. Dude, yeah, it's look a, at that. Your, shit. your enemy in World War Two. Exactly. Yeah, literally. <laughs> you have like all the trauma, the so trifecta of trauma. For Great partner, though. I'm feeling this has been wow, amazing. You know, resume your position, Dino. Yeah. That was all we needed. Thank you, Thank you Dino. <laughs> so throw gay so what reason. happened at the end of your 14-day little fit of passion? So yeah. the thing is that she basically told me, and it was the weirdest way to get my heart broken. She was like, she just came out of a long-term relationship, and she was like, Mario, I'm falling in love with you too hard right now. I'm getting too many feelings. Yeah. So we have to stop this. Damn. And I, I had just opened my heart because I had never been in a relationship. Like, I had the first a one's always the worst. Huh? I had a relationship in Germany, but it was like my high school relationship, yeah. the girl I was dating for like two years, but it was not like the same intensity, right? with her it was like dude after two hours of not looking at you like not not being able to touch each other we just then could touch and we just have like the most beautiful intimate sex it was unbelievable wow. it was so cool she was so silly just like me uh -huh. um but you know sometimes and, and then basically she uh i moved on because i had some modeling jobs the thing is when i was modeling every two one months, second Martin, what's that tattoo on your bicep you're Say, is that an Elliot Smith reference? Say yes. Is it an Elliot Smith reference? No, it's oh, not. Okay. I'm sorry. No, continue. no. Yeah. It's, you say yes when photographers ask you to get your dick sucked. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like it's too bad you were unconscious yeah. when it came to the Chinese guy. <laughs> exactly, but, yeah. but continue. Uh, well, so then, okay, let's, let's finish this story and then yeah. we can get to the rape. But yes. um, got my heart broken. And then sometimes, have you ever had this when you had this perfect relationship that was like a fucking romance fairy tale type of situation? Uh -huh. I kind of... Don't want to, I sometimes wonder about seeing her again and how it would be. Wow. Because it was the most magical thing. But sometimes I also love having this perfect fucking love story for 14 days that was so intense, never felt anything like it. Mm -hmm. Because the reality could never live up to how beautiful it was in my mind. You know? Wow. I have a girl you know. like that too, the a Jewish Orthodox woman that was half Colombian, nice. half Israeli that I dated. Yeah, beautiful combination. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she, she was an Orthodox to, uh, Jew though. So she had to, she at some mm, point left me for a Jewish man. But we only dated a year and a half, and it wasn't enough time to see many faults, and it was just like a lot of laughter. And see, really and I, sometimes you over romanticize oh, those yeah. relationships. The one that got away, you know, definitely the one that got. Because I one time had a relationship where I was had a romance with this girl. Um, she was significantly younger than me, uh, from North Carolina. We had a romance in New York, fucking beautiful. I had like three days of like you know, we hugged Empire State Building, sunrise, of you course. know, made out. It was beautiful. 
And then I saw her again. Because I was, there was my friend was in town. He's a he's a TikTok guy, and he was dating her his, her older sister. So we had a romance, the four of us, my best friend, wow. the older sister, and the younger sister, be, most beautiful romance for like four days in New York. Were you guys all kind of yeah? <laughs> and, uh, and, were, you, were you with the guy too? No, no, no. no. You were guys no. swapping chicks though? No. no. <laughs> oh Jesus, no. dude! Why do you say is this your of? fantasy? Well, he said kind of. I thought no, it was no, no, but the four of us were like shit. the four of us were just like in. in Whatever, it was just a four, four, like yeah. a double date romance. Kind sure, of like for okay, four days. that makes more sense. Beautiful. And then I saw her again, like a couple months after we've been staying in touch. It was so magical. But when I saw her again, it was almost like the magic, the, the, the reality could not live up to the magic of the first time. Everything wow. was, the mm. setting was different. And it was, it, was, it, was, it was a little sad, I'm not gonna lie. How fucked up were you when the really hot girl that you had for 14 days broke it off? But how long did that last? Listen, I'm very German, so I'm like, you know, I was, I was just like, I'm fine. I will work more. I will go back to work here. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't show any emotions. Um, mm -hmm. That's before I was raped. That opened me up. The rape opened me up literally like a little bit. Uh, <laughs> a little no, bit. After just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just like girth. <laughs> Chinese. <It's> just, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I guess for the couple, couple of years after, I didn't want to fall in love with anybody. I didn't allow myself to open up to a woman. Be were, you, how, were you, because when I first got dumped by my college girlfriend, who I had a really similar, just fucking visceral, um, the romantic fairy tale in sure. my head, like the, there sure. are signs from God that this girl is mine forever. Yeah. Like just that super passionate relationship. I had probably a full year of feeling like shit. Yeah. But obviously that was really intense for a couple of weeks to the point where I was having trouble breathing sometimes. Damn, okay. Was that the same Not for you? Not quite the same. I just moved on because I- Now like, I feel like a homo for no, opening myself up. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's gay, dude. We've all been, yeah. You're the gay one. <laughs> yeah. Nah, everybody, everybody gets, I, I've been in that place to you, man, to be honest. So. Yeah, it was more. it was more subliminal. I didn't really, have any immediate after you know anxiety after but i'm just also very german i was very you know like mm -hmm. just fucking you yeah. know yeah. Yeah. balls of steel Jews, moved kill, on kill. yeah you know, of course <laughs> yeah just move on yeah. right so that was one yeah. of the things that made you a little asexual for a while yeah but then that, the and, and then on top of that it was the um the rape too yes. because after you get raped man I didn't even think about it at the time, but I didn't want to have sex anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was, I really, I checked my testosterone. I thought about everything except for like, that it could be like trauma related. Sure. Because I checked my T levels and shit. I was like, where's my T? You know what? My pecs are still fucking on fire. I'm right. still, you know, like 7% body fat, but mm -hmm. how the fuck is, um, is my cock not wanting to bang mm -hmm. these beautiful women? You know what I mean? Uh, and I was never like overly sexual, but still like I could definitely feel a decline in even sex drive and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was just because I associated sex not with something beautiful I can share with another woman, but with work, you yeah. know? So that's what- that's So, the, so what happened? Fact. You're in China, you yeah. do the job, are you yeah. done working and now it's a party? Or you want a dinner, right? Yeah, so yeah. you invited me to dinner and I was like, you know, I, sometimes I've learned and modeling almost conditioned you to say yes to things, mm -hmm. therefore the tattoo. <laughs> yeah. I conditioned you to, you don't want to break a business relationship. You don't want to burn any bridges. It's highly encouraged to kind of play along, to even flirt a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So also having a dinner with the boss of the company you work for, it's not that unusual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when we had the dinner, it was just weird because this guy is so fucking, it's, he's like almost royalty in China. Jeez. And I didn't realize the level of power this dude had was unbelievable. He rented out a whole restaurant of a hotel, of a big hotel. Jesus. It's the equivalent of, of renting out the whole, you know, like the, the whatever, the Sophie tell or something, the full restaurant, what you rent it out fuck? for one table. It was like some James Bond villain oh shit. He rented out the whole God. thing. And there was one table where we sat and had dinner and like private service and everything. And they were all so obedient when you walked in. Uh -huh. Dude, China's a different kind of beast, too. Uh -huh. The level of power some people have in China is unfathomable. Yeah. It's beyond money. It's the just stratification, like, because some people in China, too, well, they're either Uyghur Muslim slaves, literally, or they're assembling an iPhone for fucking $6 yeah. a yeah. week. But yeah. then there are people like him yeah. who are in wow. Hong Kong and yeah. are billionaires and yeah. own these fashion brands. 100%. 100%. And I imagine... Um, yeah, there's like a class system built yes. in that we can't relate to here. There, no, there's his his family was associated to the, one of the, the there's like seven families in China that have a place in the Great Palace in Beijing. So they it's all, it's a mix between you know like Jeff Bezos meets fucking some the Queen of England or some shit like yeah, that. yeah. just in China you know wow. so like some Russian 
you know, uh, what's it called? Like a czar, like a, a yeah. royalty based yeah. right, right, right. Like Barack Obama's family might be here where they just people, some people just, they can do no wrong. Right. Fucking, yeah. He, but uh, Barack Obama is known to be, I guess, you know, now he's gay too. So yeah, he's, he's like very too. friendly and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, we have a um, crazy aside about that where yeah. we unknowingly interviewed a guy in a video who ended up being the guy who came out on Tucker Carlson and said Barack Obama fucked him. And he and it Whoa. was at the border in Texas. We did a video at the border with the there was a, a huge illegal immigration thing going on where 3000 a day were going out in this little like cut in the in the border. And that's where we where he was, which is yeah. even more okay. odd. So maybe he's government for the know. first he's our first CIA. border video. May 2022. Correct. When we first get to the border after the monologue, the guy we see in like a Bucky's gas station hat. Yes. I remember him wearing. <laughs> That's the guy. Yeah. That's but, crazy. It's yeah. him, bro. Dude, go, somebody, go bring it up, I guess, if you want. Shout out to Cole Johnstone on my Patreon pointed yeah. that out to me. But uh, yeah, that's, that's amazing. fucking yeah. nuts. But continue. Con continue. We'll, we'll Wait, show so it you're after. in a restaurant. Yeah. This guy. Yeah, in a restaurant. And, people uh, are, oh, Yeah, exactly. Wow. And I can see how much power this guy has, right? So it was, it was a little weird. And he was actually kind of like, he was a little, he was kind of quirky almost. Like he was, he was very smart, like highly intelligent How was his individual. English? Yeah, that's pretty good. Ask. Pretty good. Good pretty English. Good. Yeah, pretty good. A little bit of an accent, but like really, because he's been, he runs fucking so many companies. Yeah, you know? Jesus. And he, he even taught me about his life. He said that he like grew up yeah. every morning because he's such a, an elite uh, family, right? He had like every morning wake up to do like at 5 a.m. Does he does kung fu for an hour. Then he's like a typical villain, dude. And wow. At 6 a.m. to 7, he does like piano for an hour. And then he goes to school. He has what to be the, the best fuck? at everything. So he's like, he runs all these companies and shit. Even in Europe, they own, his family, they own a bunch of companies in Europe, even big companies. Jesus. Yeah, I think his family owned Panasonic, oh you know, God, like in, in, it, in yeah. Europe. So insane, man. So basically at dinner with this guy, we ate like hot pot. It's like a Chinese thing. Mm. And then- Was uh, it good or disgusting? It was great. It was great. Mm. It was actually great. It was a great restaurant. Some of the things they put in like chicken feed was not some, my thing, chicken but it was very high end restaurants. It was not like street food or anything. Mm. Um, and then we went to his place. And I was like, sure, I'll check out his place or whatever, you know. And again, that's where are I you starting to get uncomfortable at this point? I should have maybe drawn the line, but also, dude, I was in a lot of situations like that where it always turned out, and I ended up getting a job, and I didn't right. have to even do anything, you know. Right. I was just open, and I'm naive too. I'm from a small town, dude, you know, so I kind of things have always worked out for me. You I never even envisioned that someone might drug you, though. No, for example, no, no, no. yeah, yeah. I've um, never been in a situation I don't think where I thought someone might you, drug me. And that's the thing, also, as a man, I would say this too. Like you know, as a woman, I understand how women are often more scared because when you wouldn't put yourself in a position like that as a woman necessarily. As a man, I was like, you know, I mean, this guy knows kung fu, so probably I wouldn't <laughs> have had a chance. But um, <laughs> you know, maybe I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Were you no. drinking? Uh, I don't drink, but I did drink some. He, they had some like. Um, What's it called? I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't sake. Maybe it was sake. They had some Japanese, they appropriate, mm -hmm. whatever. Were you making an exception? To yeah, drink sake? Because, be, I don't drink at all, but I was like, again, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of play with this guy. He offered, it's a cultural thing almost. He invited, he invited me to his culture. He showed me hot pot, right. uh, Chinese food, and then a Chinese uh, beverage. And I was like, sure, I'll, I'll try a little bit. So I tried a little bit and then went to his place. And then uh, it was very weird, man. We started playing like some weird board, like some weird, uh, game, some drinking game, you know, where he was, mm. he wanted to play like, it's called Liar's Dice. It's almost like poker with dice. Oh he was so fucking good at it. Uh, and he beat it. And I, I was drinking a little bit. And then he showed me his place, fucking amazing. Um, unbelievable place, right? Like he's a billionaire, right? It's, a, it's like a typical, have you seen this Cody Ko video with the kombucha king? Mm. GT Dave, mm -mm. whatever. It's like a, it's like a layer. It's like a, almost like a, a layer of like a villain. It's very minimalistic, huge, like Chinese sculptures, like wow. insane, like a museum almost, right? right. And then uh, he, we go to his, he shows me his bedroom and he was like, hey, do you want to watch a movie? And I thought at that point, I had a little report with this guy. You guess his face. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you guess there I'm like, like yeah. And uh, I was like, you know what? I don't fucking know, man. I'm in China. I don't know anybody here. I don't know. Well, let's watch a movie, I guess. You know, I was yeah. like, he's, he, was, he was actually very friendly. He was not, didn't give me any creepy vibes. Okay. Besides from the fact that he was so powerful and so smart. Was and he out? Was he no, out no, as a gay no, guy? No, no, no. Hmm. He's not. He, he's even, he's, he was married to a, he had to marry. Oh, so he was married to. He had so to marry reason I a woman yeah. for power. Jesus. Because she was from another family. Right. China is a different fucking beast. Yeah. It's unbelievable, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and I'll be fully honest, man. I don't think I'll go back to China. Even the things talking about this on a podcast. Yeah, they China can. is a different fucking level. They're to a where different level, yeah. You're, you don't want to fuck, you, you don't want to no. fuck with it. I, no, no, I no. wouldn't go to China after, we've talked a bunch of shit about China on yeah, this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also just if they at the airport looked up our names and found this shit, who yeah. knows if they would detain us for a little bit while they sorted 100%. it out. If they yeah, arrested yeah. us for 
for filming, it just it would not be yeah. worth it to get no, into no, any no, kind of trouble in China. Yeah, no, I'm no, not no. going back to China, dude. No, I'm not going yeah. back. I'm not going back. So then um, we we watched a movie, and it's the fuck. This is actually a funny story. He wanted to watch the movie Bridesmaids. Oh my god, it's his favorite movie of all time. It's a good comedy. It's a good comedy. It is like the only great female-driven comedy. Yeah. Can you name another one? It's a great movie. Uh, It's a great movie. Yeah, you're right. It's probably one of the top ones, 100. Yeah. No, so we watched Bridesmaids, and it's the most fucked up thing. We watched Bridesmaids in Chinese, though. Like it's dubbed in Chinese. (laughs) <laughs> but because I'm German, he put on German subtitles. Hey, oh. Can we can imagine? Can, can we re- right now reenact the scene where um, your boy from Mad Men tries to get Kristen Wiig to suck his dick? Dude, I can't. In Chinese. In Chinese <laughs> I, I can only do a Japanese accent. So. Oh, that works. Dude. That works. Mark but it was fucked up. But still, the, it's like, oh, is that? I just want to give you all. Oh, you uh, want to give me a, a lap dance? Uh, <laughs> oh, this sounds very Japanese, like yeah. uh, kimono Dude, sashimi. I, I can't do a Chinese. Sashimi. I don't even know how Chinese sounds. Yeah, just like. do it Japanese. Just like oh, you want to give me. You want to take a, a lap, a nap? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you, oh, 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 asshole, Ching Chong, asshole. <laughs> oh, I uh, pick you up uh, so far away. Oh my God, how are you not? <laughs> I love it, man. You guys are fucking on a different level, dude. We're yeah. fucking around, dude. Yeah, 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 you got to yeah. come on the road and do a show with us, bro. I think, I think our so. fans would dude, love you. Because I'm acting out this fucking bit with the Chinese where I talk Chinese and I'm like, I can't even. I acted it out once. And uh-huh. I pretend I had to pretend Chinese what you just did. Mm. And then people got very tense, very oh, quick. Course, you know? yeah. So um, I think I, I want to learn the actual line. Like I want to, um, you know what Melissa McCarthy said? Yeah. Hey, the dress is so pretty. It makes my stomach hurt. In Chinese, <laughs> the words that came out of my mouth were like, huh? <laughs> And then the German subtitles were like, Dein Kleid sieht heute aber wunderschön aus. Mein Magen schmerzt davon. You know? Oh, it was like really fucked up. Oh, um, shit. And then halfway throughout the movie, it was a very weird experience, you know, watching it in Chinese because it, yeah. it was very off because, you know, the Chinese words are obviously don't match the, yeah. the mouth movement mm-hmm. at all. Um, and then after like halfway through the movie, he offered me ketamine. Oh. Old horse tranquilizer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've never yes. done ketamine. It's done fun ketamine? I have here, yeah. Well, not if you get raped. You know? oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you touche. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, non-rape yeah. ketamine. Non-rape ketamine. Big fan. Uh, no, ketamine actually, dude, my friend had a huge psychedelic experience with intra, intramuscular mm-hmm. ketamine. So you put mm-hmm. it in your, um, like a, with a, with a, almost a like a COVID a needle. Yeah, oh, and, and it transports you into a different universe. It helps with this depression. It's actually very... It's there's something they use it. They use it to treat depression. Oh yeah, it's yeah. very. There's a lot of studies coming out, and it's 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 it's, FD, it's approved by for medical. You can yeah. go to Cedar Sinai if you struggle get with depression. Ketamine, you, yeah. can, you can get it there, dude. Uh, MDMA, uh, mushrooms, shrooms, is psychedelic, especially ketamine. Yeah. All yeah. that shit is being used medically now to treat trauma and depression. All the time. Which how ironic would it be if they cured your PTSD with ketamine? With ketamine, yeah, right. That would be yeah. <laughs> After you got raped on. Yeah, yeah. So, so what happened is I did uh-huh. some ketamine, and again I don't I don't even do drugs, man. But I was like. Fuck man, I'm 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 in China. This movie is fucking awful. Let's just fucking get. This do you is, smoke it? Uh, no. So I, I've never done. I did a, so I've never been around it. You do. It's you do. Usually do a you do a line. Yeah. And I did like a, the tiniest amount because I'm very sensitive to drugs. I know that mm. tiniest amount. And also I don't know if it was ketamine because I reacted so strongly to it. Because when I took the tiniest bump, dude, I was in a K hole. Mm-hmm. And I took like half of what he took. You know what I mean? And um, I maybe was laced with something else. Who knows? Because right. this guy's very powerful, very manipulative, right? So right. bottom line is I, I was laying on the bed and I, I couldn't move my finger. Like literally you can't. It's almost like when you try to move your hand Jesus. and you can kind of move, but you're not really in control of your body, but you're fully aware and conscious. Right. It's very weird. Fuck. Ket- ketamine so is like a weird. Up. Ketamine is like a weird, almost like a little drunk, but also like it impairs your your. Your body, your movements almost. Yeah. But it's kind of like weird because it disassociates your body from your mind. So I literally could see myself laying on the bed, but I could see myself from the outside of my body. Almost like you, as if you put a GoPro on, on in the top right corner of the room and you can mm-hmm. see what's happening in the room. Mm-hmm. And then I saw, and I'm going to tell this, like I'm going to, I'm, I'm writing about this right now in comedy. Sure. And so I'm going to tell it like I would tell on stage. I, I appreciate did it, that. Yeah. I did, I'm doing it for the first time actually in I two love days. This. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Great. So I have a show coming up, storytelling show. Mm-hmm. So I was laying on the bed, right? And I couldn't move my hands and I could see everything that was happening in the room. And then slowly I saw the Chinese guy rolling over to my side. Oh, no. And then I saw how he was slowly pulling down my pants. Oh, and shit. And then he unbuckled his pants. And it's not what you're thinking. I know you're thinking, getting a little tense in here right now, but it's not what you're thinking. He actually unbuckled his pants because he tried to bang me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is what you guys are thinking? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
Um, yeah, man, I could, I could, I could, I could see a lot happen, you know. And then, you know, the basically punchline when I talk about a stand-up is like, you know, then I, I was there and I was like, my mom always told me to think positively, to reframe things in my life, mm-hmm. and um, I was like, at least. He had a small dick. I'm he getting read Chinese. by Chinese guys. God, yeah. Um, Damn. I, so you could use you, you were ah, God. If you remember it, then it's like not like you were past. I mean, yeah. So you, here's the thing. Here's a true story. Of what happened in stand up? I can't do because I actually I did this bit once on a, like not a real show though, and um, it got a big laugh. Like when I turned it around with like you know uh, oh that that is what you're thinking. The, the tension got released, right. but there was still this air of like people are too worried about me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a very tough thing to confront. Yeah, like, talk yeah, about course. it in stand up. W- and what is there any other famous bit about? I mean, other than like Hannah Gadsby. Hannah Gadsby oh, I've never yeah. watched her garbage. But is there any other big time comedians who have a bit that is that intimately personal? Mm. I'm trying to think because that's a maybe good, not men. I don't know. I haven't heard of it. Mm. Yeah, and that the chick. I feel like chick comedians too. Is there a chick who talks about getting raped on stage? Uh, I think so. I mean, the 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 whole punchline at the end. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. th- 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 Sorry, at the I- end what I'm what I'm doing right now is like at the bit where I, where I was thinking about how I could end it because I was like there needs to be a happy ending you know right and then <laughs> it's like there was a happy ending because because he came <laughs> <laughs> but anyways there's a lot of there's a lot in there um uh, it's a lot darker than I usually go in comedy but anyways and then the end I'm like you know good things came from it first of all I got a big modeling job after which solved Did all you? my financial problems Did you actually kind of I mean I got booked for something else yeah related yeah. to him yeah okay. then secondly yeah he better have fucking yeah hooked you right up right after that shit yeah, yeah. secondly. I talked about it online, which can, uh, which inspired a lot of men to talk about their emotions. And That's third, great. most importantly, now that I've been raped, I have everything I need to become the greatest female comic. <laughs> you know, so um, I think a lot of women Damn. stereotypically have talked about that stuff. Yeah, but I think it's dude, it's that's what I realized on the mushroom trip. Basically, I went into the rape, and I was like. You know, on six grams, I had an eye mask on. I put, um, you know, my friend was like a, a ceremonial setting with a clear intention. I had AirPods in with some like, you know, psychedelic Damn. tribal dum, 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 dum music. Yeah. And I went into like my fucking, I saw I had an ego death, went back, came back as a bird, fucking died multiple times. Mm-hmm. Saw the rape happen. And I was like, show me fucking more. And I went and have such an acceptance about the rape. And I'm grateful for it, truly, which is why I can now write about it. Because there we go. If, if you have not fucking processed this shit, mm-hmm. it will show on stage if you talk yeah, about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm completely fine with it now. And um, I went into the rape, dude, and I saw, it's so crazy, man. I saw that we're all one. I mean, I don't know if you've done psychedelics, but it's a common thing that you have an ego death. You realize we're all one, mm-hmm. but we have our egos that separate us, right? And I saw this dude like banging me, you know, raping me. But then I saw how he was actually fucking himself. Like mm-hmm. anything we do to other people, we do to ourselves, essentially. True. Yeah. So it was there was something so comical in that. And then yeah. there was so much silliness in that. And then I had this crazy, that was the, the most powerful visual of my, of my mushroom experience. I saw myself at an orchestra. I was the composer of the orchestra. And I saw all the darkness in the world, right? I saw like even the wars and the Holocaust. And I saw how I was raped and all the darkness that I associate with my life. And I saw it like a dark cloud. And then I, I lifted up the, the, the wand as a composer. And I lifted up that dark cloud. And as I was playing a note, the dark cloud became bright light. And it became like a song that was shared with the world. Nice. Which almost is like... If something shitty happens to you, you have a responsibility to turn it into art. That's right. Or make it into whatever, however way you, you find it. You took its to. power away, you know? Dude, and now I'm yeah. like, I did. I really did. And it's it powerful power to talk about it on stage even. Yes. With the intention of, again, you know, in a way raising awareness. And I also think there's so much comedy and fucking trauma. Oh, yeah. And the tension you built with that bit, when you release that shit, I did it, like I did it's it a once. special bit. Could be, Holy yeah. fuck. It's a different level of... Um, right. It, did it work? It worked? It worked. It worked. Some bits were still like, they were a little bit, because how I did it the first time, the reality is that this Chinese dude was packing. Oh, that is the reality? That is the reality, dude. Fuck. My man was packing. He had Fuck. a bigger dick than me, and I'm not saying Fuck. that's a big accomplishment, but I still, like, stereotypically, I... And again, I can't be a little bit racist because when you get fucked by an ethnicity, you can't be a little bit racist towards that race. I think that's how it works, right? Yeah, and they're yes. a powerful race, so yeah. <laughs> that's a good race to be racist yeah. towards. I think it's all good. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad. Oh, I'm actually, I wish I was raped by a Jewish guy because that would help with my guilt, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Were you freaking out during COVID, though, because you like already didn't really like the Chinese and fucking, now I got to wear a mask? I, I got to be honest, that that did not cross my mind where your mind just went. Well, <laughs> you know, well you're I a better can, man than me. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. So when did you come out of like the paralysis kind of place and, and kind of did you stay the night or did you leave? No, right no. I, I showered at his place and yeah. I left and I literally did. I didn't even I pretended nothing happened uh. for five years. I didn't even like I, I wasn't like 
let's talk about how you just raped me, dude. You know, I was just yeah. like, uh, I was just, oh, cool. That's a fun movie. Hey, uh, see you soon. And I just left, dude. So um, what I am curious because you said it, it went GoPro. So you were just, I imagine it was very dreamlike. You see yeah. yourself getting banged. Yeah. When did the camera come back into your own head? Oh man. And were maybe, you in first person again? Maybe like five, 10, 15 minutes. Did it last that long? This, uh, no, I'm hot. You know, he came quick. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was circ uncircumcised. Yeah, keep fucking that up. A nice one. That's it's hot. hard to get that one right. Yeah. Uh, it is so you, he came hard. quick. Did he use loop? I don't think so, dude. I don't know. I honestly don't know because oh it all, God. also in that moment, it all, I don't know, dude. I don't even get it because I didn't even, dude, for, for a second, I was also like, I never thought I would have gay sex, but if it happened, I was like, man, I wish I was a top. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel like, dude, stop, pause the rape for a second. Let me, let's switch positions real yeah. quick. You know, let's yeah. switch positions here. Um, but dude, I, um, I don't, it's a very, <sighs> It's been so long. It was like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know the specifics of it. I remember I have some visuals specifically, but it's, I don't know. It, just neither of you have done ketamine before. Mm -hmm. No. No? So it is, it is almost like- I've done salvia. So I know what it's like to not be in your own head yeah. in the present time any longer. Okay, interesting. Salvia, I think is a little, that's more like psychedelic, like a little bit more trippy, right? Like I assume so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're on a different planet. Dude, for a it's hard minutes. to explain ketamine. It's a little bit like you're drunk. It's okay. probably close to drunk than a psychedelic experience, mm -hmm. but with a little bit of a weird dissociation. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It's weird. It's weird, man. Um, and, and more of a body. So definitely, because it's a horse tranquilizer, so it's definitely more of a body yeah tranquilizer too right you you very like you know you don't really function loosey goosey yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so um yeah man so 15 minutes i came back to it and then i just went to i remember going to the shower and i just showered and i, I literally in that moment i was like oh this is what happened whatever i'm like whatever it's an experience you know what i mean life's about experiences it, yeah. i'm not even this not gonna bother me at all did your ass hurt not really it, I, it, I was surprised i'm genuinely surprised mm -hmm. how even though he was packing, it was not as bad as because all these all these gay guys are talking about. Oh, yeah. so it's such a big, you know, all the bottoms are. He just prep so much, you know. But yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. maybe I was born to be a bottom. Who fucking knows? But. <laughs> Dino, no more excuses for you. It doesn't hurt that yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> there it is again. Also, I've been I've been watching Dino's action camera. It hasn't yeah. moved in a long time. I know it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've been trying good. to zone out. Well, nice. I, that's. That's good. I'm glad we pay you to yeah, sell Yeah, it's out. great. I'm great glad we pay you to do something a fucking... Good employee. I, I know the Chinese are taking American jobs. Well, yeah. a Chinese tripod's about to take yours. Yeah. Fuck up. Yeah, pretty soon. <laughs> it's going to be able to... <laughs> God damn. And I'm going to do what his fashion boss did to him. Oh, to you. Also, right. I'm going to yeah. rape you, Dino. Yeah. Continue. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm going to rape you, Dino. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So I'm going to call HR on you guys, by the way. This is great. This is great. It's Papa Leo. To me. I'm HR. So. Okay, you're fucked, dude. You're fucked. I can't help you. I can't help you. Um, no, but when it happened, I did talk about it for five years. Yeah. And it's dude, funny, man, because then I kind of, um, I also focused so much on work. I was like, no, I'm I'm not a sex machine. I'm a work machine. So I focused on mm -hmm. YouTube. I made online courses. I worked so fucking hard. And um, yeah, it was, I was I was genuinely happy just sexually. And um, it, it's hard to reconnect with sex. Damn. Until I talked about it maybe, I think like four, maybe it was before COVID, maybe around COVID, like 2019, maybe I made a video about it on YouTube. I talked about it with my best friend first, Travis. I make videos with him as did well. Did you do well a video? Yeah, Good. yeah. Did yeah. you mention any names or the brand that this guy's associated with? No, no. Man. It's also rough because I don't even know this guy's real name. Wow. Yeah, and you don't want a guy that a, powerful, dude. Who knows what he'll yeah, do? Yeah, you to don't retaliate. want that. Yeah, fuck I that. was like, I wrote a letter. How I do, and I had, I have like, I took like um, trauma therapy and all this stuff. Or I have a therapist, and I did this whole thing where like I fucking, I wrote a letter to the guy on acid, which is the fucking crazy experience of my life, dude. Mm -hmm. I wrote a letter to the guy and I just really, anything I've never experienced or ex uh, never expressed to him, uh -huh. I wrote in that letter and it was, I don't know, I never, I'm not a very angry person and then I could release a lot of that stuff, you uh -huh. know, that I hold, that I held on to for so long because I thought I couldn't talk about it. And that was fucking powerful. And then I went out, it was in Egypt and I burnt the letter and it was, Really powerful. Even that is some act. model shit, dude. Yeah, yeah that's some real burning, burning a letter. I love that, dude. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible that when you guys were at dinner, and I'm being serious right now, Mario, that you guys talked about Chinese zodiac signs, and you guys were both born in the year of the cock? <laughs> <laughs> There is the year of the cock. I mean, <laughs> there it is. There is. Dude, I don't know which year I was. Is it the rooster? Dude, I think I'm actually the born rooster. in the year of the rooster. Oh, he is I'm born, born in, in the year 94. Of the cock. You're not allowed to say no then, dude. Look yeah. up the year 94. Is Look at the year of the rooster. I think Chinese it's the year of the cock. Year. Yeah. How do you do, what is the Google there? Oh, just Chinese. Google like um, just, uh, punch January 94, 1994, which Chinese zodiac? No, not, yeah, not yeah, New yeah. Year. Chinese zodiac, January 1994, Austin. Yeah. 
this is going to let you know whether or not what happened is is year uh, of the, the dog. dog. Oh, okay, we're yes, safe. we're safe. We're safe. 1994. Yeah, I wonder yeah. what he was though. The dog is. Dude, he could be anywhere between 35 and 74. <laughs> He's fucking, dude, he had so yeah. much. He had so much fucking Botox. Really? I mean, he looked very good. He was actually pretty tall. He was like a. He was, he was not fully uh, Chinese. Also, he was. Yeah, it doesn't sound Chinese. like it, dude. Big he was cock, probably half Nigerian or some shit like that. Half like, Nigerian, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, what a crazy story, bro. That's a fucking yeah, dude. story. Yeah. So you, you burned the letter. You put up the video. Yeah. So I put the video on YouTube. It's called. I don't know what to call it, but I was like, I just called it what it was. I called it, I was raped. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I got so much fucking love. I mean, I get, I get letters to this day from people and it was very wow. impactful. And I donated all the, every, I said every like I donate to a one in six, which is an organization that supports men that have been assaulted and raped. Mm -hmm. Because actually, dude, did you know that America, and I don't know if this is a myth, but I heard on Joe Rogan and other sources, more men get raped than women in America each year. Wow. I yeah, didn't know if you that. include prison rape. Because jail. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that I know about that. Nuts? I know about that. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you spent You've been to prison? You spent I've been yeah, to jail. 24 hours almost. Yeah. My yeah, no, uh, my opening like four jokes in stand up are all about rape too. Male rape. Yeah. Yeah. So Nice, man. I, we, this should, is, I've we, never should have a, we should have a show the the rape show or something. Yeah, the rape so show, <laughs> dude. I'm so down. <laughs> oh, well. And then at the, the end rape of it, show. we can just rape Dino on stage. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're right. What if, imagine working, imagine if this was Hewlett Packard and he was one of our coworkers and just saying this horrible. Oh my God, right? I yeah. know. No, you guys, yeah. yeah. Wow, what a fucking story. I think you're meant to do comedy, man. You're a really funny guy, probably because of all this drama, you know? It's going to be your dude, worst but, days. But also, be I'll be honest, day. it was probably good for me because my life was fucking easy, dude. I was yeah. born in Germany, mm -hmm. fucking in a small town with no crime, was mm -hmm. like, Born, you know, six foot three. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I've had a pretty good life. So I actually think the rape was good for me because life's been too easy up until that point. You How know many chicks I mean? did you fucked up till then? Not as many. How Not many chicks many. have you had sex with to this day? Maybe eight. Wow. Wow. Some people would say, some people being Leo, Stop. that you're not maximizing your gift. <laughs> no. <laughs> until I, you get I to know 100. That. That's <laughs> so stupid. Listen, yeah. I know that. And I... That's the thing I that, respect that. I respect that he man. doesn't bang yeah. around so much. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. And the girls I have had sex with, I mean, they were, they were, they were, you know, top like, of the line. Yeah, yeah. And so that's like, all you need. You got to fuck a fat girl to get that out of your system too. Maybe. So yeah. listen, I also don't. <laughs> I also don't drink or party that much. Right. I was, yeah. I'm pretty fucking. You know, I'm. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a nerd. Right? You're so German. I'd, dude, I'd yeah. focus on work a lot, and I don't. Yeah. I don't just fucking get drunk and stuff like that, which there's a high correlation between getting drunk and getting laid. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So, we talk about uh, that all yeah, the time. No, 100%. Yeah. That, is, yeah. that is the case. Dude, so, when yeah. you, uh, I've been dealing with this sort of recently that when I, because I haven't, I drink maybe once every two or three months. Okay. And trying to have casual sex, because sometimes the animal takes over. Yeah. And you got your dick in one hand and you're texting a girl like, ah, you need to come over. And then she gets there and then you have awkward, sober sex Mm. And you don't really know what to do afterwards. It's tough, dude. Because it's one thing when you're in Vegas and sure. after you come, there's like five minutes of small talk and then she goes back to her hotel room and you yeah. never see that girl again. Or you like, ha ah, ha, last night was fun, huh? And that's the end of it. When you're sober and you have to deal with the wreckage of this random girl you just talked into the sack, it's not nearly as much fun as when you're at a frat party and you're 20 years old. Yeah. And then like you just fuck a girl in the closet and then fuck, man. you don't even parties. I want I want to do a keg stand so bad. All my knowledge about America is based on American pie. Oh. So I want that experience, dude. But I've I'm German. We don't have shit. Like We're going to make we don't you have we'll, prom. whenever we have a party, we'll have Please, a keg stand. I want to go to a, a I have real a bucket American list and for real going to a college party. How old are you I'm doing it? 29. OK, yeah, you're fine. You could still go to a college party, yeah. dude. You probably could. At UCLA, you could probably just rush a frat. Dude, and, yeah. And they wouldn't even with know. a bunch of fucking Poindexter nerds. They're like, we need this guy's hot. We need me. Yeah, get we this need, guy in here. He'll bring chicks over. That is all. <laughs> I'll bring a bunch of gay guys and they're going to follow me. <laughs> <laughs> and film that. Dude. And they're going to rape you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the American fraternity system is actually pretty gay because this is it how is it works. Gay, yeah. This is how it works. Oh, yeah. I know the hazing rituals. But, right? yeah. I mean, aside from all that. But that is gay, though. That's definitely gay. But gay this is the bottom line is the number one decision making factor on whether or not a fraternity lets you in is how 
good looking you are mm. because the older guys in the fraternity want young, good looking guys to basically do PR for the house and the quote unquote hotter the house is perceived as being, yeah. the more good looking chicks will come. Correct. So it's like oh. a pussy pyramid scheme. It's a great just, genius. You it's just genius. keep <laughs> more and more hot guys in the younger generations of the house. So the old fucking seniors with drinking problems and developing beer bellies, yeah. they can fuck the 18 year old drop dead hot alpha fees. That's fucking sick. Yeah. So wow. they would love you. To this day, if you were like, I'm a grad student, they'd be like, yeah, get like, the fuck in I'm here, I'm a German buddy. exchange yeah. student, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'd love in, you. Dude. You should rush a frat. That'd be funny as fuck. You should film that. Dude, SAE at UCLA would let in like 26-year-old grad students. That's hilarious. Which you're, I don't think you're allowed to do that. That's but hilarious. they would somehow jig all the paperwork. Dude, I would have loved that shit, dude. 26? <sighs> dude, I want, I want it so bad. I want it so bad. It is, I, it is the easiest place to get laid. The only well, thing I sure. did is I went to the Undie Run. Okay. Have you and done that? You, yeah. UCLA, I, that. I, I, did it I interviewed run. people there. That was fucking That's, hilarious. Dude, yeah. it's funny. You said it was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, UCLA. But no, I also did a street interview because we did a stand-up show in Irvine. I went to UCI, mm -hmm. Irvine. Not as yeah. good. Super not nerdy. Much of a, not much of a real college campus. Dude, very nerdy school, you know? Yeah. Um, everybody I interviewed, they were all like kind of, you know? Try and stuff like yeah. but UCLA that was fun the undie run so I kind of got a yeah. taste of that but I haven't been to a real frat party yeah like I'm, I want American Pie experience you know USC yeah. is the best frat party scene probably mm -hmm. in Los Angeles UCLA is yeah. okay but UCLA we call them commuter schools so many students at UCLA their parents live within easy driving distance mm. they're from Southern California so they go home on the weekend. Yeah. Got it. And that yeah. takes away from the sense of community. Yeah. Whereas USC, I think they party pretty fucking hard. Yeah. Okay. But, but the truth is a lot of that mythology from yeah. American Pie of the keg stand and of the yeah, that? banging two hot chicks. Mm -hmm. It's it really kind of died with me too. Yeah. Because I mean, I Undeniably, a fraternity is a high risk place yes. for unwanted oh, sexual yeah. advances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say rape. I never, ever have known of or heard about even a couple of rungs away from me socially. Never even heard about a real honest to God rape taking place. Mm. But were chicks getting maybe fondled or groped in frat houses at UCLA when I was there? Of course, yeah. because there I mean, date parties would take place where a guy and a girl would get zip tied together and have to finish a pitcher full of jungle juice, Jesus. which is pretty much a big Long Island iced tea. Yeah. So obviously there's going to be some stuff going on. Yeah. I, I, I think what's happened now, though, is so many complaints happened once Me Too happened and became fashionable to like out people and accusations happened. So, um, so many of those arose in the, in the university banned alcohol. They banned all these date parties. Mm. There are all these restrictions. I think most girls would probably be like, it's gone a little too far. Now, yeah, now yeah. guys are afraid of their own shadow. They won't even make sure. eye contact with me when asking <laughs> yeah, me to yeah, an yeah. event. Yeah. And we have to drink fucking, uh, uh, long, not Long Island iced tea. Kombucha. Kombucha yeah. or fucking <laughs> yeah. Arizona iced tea yeah, yeah, yeah. on Friday night parties. So it's gone so far in the other way. I think yeah. everybody, guys and girls, are having less fun now. Dang. And those wild parties you're thinking about, they existed in my time in college. Uh, God damn it. There's a, couple, a lot of house parties in like other states too, yeah, like we, Texas and stuff. If you went to the University of Alabama, I'm sure they still fucking party hard. Yeah. yeah dude. Right, dude, I want to go. Guys, if you ever do a show in fucking some rural ass town, because I've yes. seen all the like liberal, like I've been to LA, I've lived in New York, I lived in New York and LA. Mm. I've been to San Francisco, I've been to Chicago. I have not been to freaking be like, Whatever, fuck, I don't yeah. even know a town name, but like yeah. somewhere We've in Arkansas. Been to some fuck, like, I, want, I, just, I, want I don't know any German that. town names. Like, I Dusseldorf. Well, that's a big <laughs> city, yeah. But like, you know, some small, like, my hometown in Germany is called IPSbach im Hochschwarzwald. What? He, he, he just said he's going to kill Jews. The, no, he <laughs> no, didn't. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just, an innocent town. It's a town in the Black Forest. But no, the equivalent, the equivalent of IPSbach im Hochschwarzwald in, in America. <laughs> that's the town? I, that's I want to go there, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. the town name? Yeah. Can, you, can you tell him how to spell it? I need to see that laid out. Alpiersbach im Hochschwarzwald. You got that, oh Austin? You're German. You got you got Austin, that? take a stab. One try, more try, try it. Try it. One more time. Say it one more time. Alpiersbach im Hochschwarzwald. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Pack. Pack. I don't think. I don't think those letters occur in German. I don't know, dude. <laughs> H. It'd be an H, maybe. I don't know. It starts with an A. 
So it starts a- with an A, dude. Okay, just, just type in Alpier Spark because that's probably easier. So A-L-P-I-R. Dude. This is crazy. A-L-P-I-R. S-B-A-C-H. There it is. Town of Germany, saw? Mm-mm. There, that one. Town of Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one. Damn. Yes, that's where I'm from. That's where I'm from. Wow, it's probably See, beautiful, huh? Two bears fucking. Why are they put the fucking two bears fucking right <laughs> yeah, should there? Should we dude? call? Dude, I'm trying to call German Mark right now, dude. I've never seen a fucking. We have a, a huge one of the biggest fans and, and a friend at this point, German Mark. And dude, you yeah, you should talk to him. That'd be great. German he's very Mark. German, bro. He's from. Uh, I think he's from Berlin, but he's from Dusseldorf. He's our, he was like our first Patreon, his first Patreon way back in the day. Yeah, bro. Damn it. He got a new number. Maybe I think he did get a new number. Let me see if I can find him. He's a a special fan. We love him very much. I told him he could come to my wedding one day. He might've had a new number. That's so dope. Yeah. He's dude. So you met him. So he's a Patreon fan and then Patreon fan. And we met him and he's the dopest guy ever, bro. Ever. That's so cool. Do you have his new number? I'm going to find it right now. Yeah. So your Patreon is your pay. Is it, is it, what what are you doing? Patreon just exclusive stuff. Do you show nudes and shit? Or what do you do? Yeah, with some some like, nude chicks on the. If you pay enough, you can rape me. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like golden, yeah, golden it's tier. Yeah, yeah. The golden no, he has yeah. one of the That's tiers. Is Twenty five dollars a month. Yeah. yeah. Twenty five dollars a month. You could get yeah. once a month or for the pot. For we have two pages. Yeah. The the Leo and Danny show Patreon subscribe for the pa- for the podcast is an extra episode. And it's the Danny Mullen Patreon subscribe. Yeah, and subscribe. How dare you? Yeah. Well, the Mario Adrian Patreon. So yeah, so yeah, but he gets he does a couple things for his like two two vlogs plus. Anal sex with you? Wow, dude, that is crazy. Nice, That's right. Man. All right, Mark. It's Mark with a C, right? So your demo is probably mm, male, nothing. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> I was, I was like, dude, you, we need I was it. like, if there's a woman watching this, then, hey, shout out. Shout out. There, yeah. Our demographic is, I don't know how many gay people we have, but it's it seems like it's, it is it's overwhelmingly worse. men in their 20s and 30s, yeah. probably straight. Mostly we American. We do have some gay fans. They definitely, we definitely yeah, have a, a number of gays, for sure. I They'll pop into my live stream and be like, "I'm gay," but you. Well, guys they're are probably gay. just mocking the homosexual community. No, nah, these your guys live are stream. definitely gay. His like his live stream. I'm sure they're just like, "Oh, I'm fucking gay, dude. I suck dick." <laughs> <laughs> dude, but there's so many like super straight dudes who can't find do around. very gay things in America. Oh, yeah. up? We talked about the football, like the fucking yeah. baseball ass slap. The hockey, the hockey team, dude. I What's heard about, about that, a, a guy that played on a, on a hockey team in uh, college, and he said that they would draw happy, pa- happy, happy faces on each other's penises with sharpies. Aww. What about S- Sammy Sosa, dude? Oh yeah, this is a very gay. This is one of my Danny's favorite. One of my favorite stories too. <laughs> but uh, one of my buddies played professional baseball for the Texas Rangers, and uh, Sammy Sosa. By the way, you know when he played on the Rangers, he was almost forty. This motherfucker was doing that at almost forty. Anyway. What he did was they had this thing where they would haze the rookies. The, there was So he was a rookie, mm-hmm. and they go, hey, Sammy Sosa, who's one of the great, he has 600 and something home runs, uh, top three home run leaders of all time. Huge like superstar. He's Adolf Hitler of baseball. I, would, nice. I don't know about that, dude. Okay, but for him, yes. Yeah, sorry, for him, yes. I forgot he was German. Anyway, they go, hey, he wants to see you. He's in room 22B. Go check, you know, in the hotel. Go say hi. So th- this was the gag every time. When the, when the rookie would walk in, Sammy Sosa had a... They said the guy told me he thought it was 14 inches, but he said he just had the his cock completely hard <laughs> and he's completely naked on the bed and just waiting for the guy to come in. And then what would we say? Leo? And then he would do it. Well, that's just up to my imagination. But, but you got to do a Sammy Sosa voice. Like, hey, what do you think about the man? <laughs> no, but anyway, he was, he was fucking Dominican. But anyway, he literally oh, would just. Yeah. So for every rookie, this is something that he would do, dude. And uh, yeah, that's pretty gay, though. Right. I mean, that is gay. It's also very straight, though. Yeah, you know what yes. I mean? There's something very straight about this, too, because yeah. like some, he likes to show penises like all the time. Straight fuck, you know, this like. Gay men would, I don't know, but did they follow through? You know what I mean? Mm. Is he too good looking? You don't want to see his cock. Because usually anybody on this pod, we, we do know, the... You know, it yeah. would be, he is so good looking, it would be a little creepy to see Mario's dick. See, he's uncomfortable. See, that's uncomfortable. He should be more, you should be straighter. Wait, so usually you ask... He asks all all the, guests. almost every guest. Yeah. To, show, to show their cock yeah. on the podcast. He loves that. Yeah, yeah, he loves yeah. that. I mean, he really want to, Mario. Yeah, he loved our bit about where we have Rat Dick Ralph fucking the Robin Flies at Dawn. He's like, that's fucking <laughs> awesome, dude. No, that, is, a, that is one of the best bits 
idiots on this podcast. It's ever, great. Yeah, yeah. Where we had to say it in code yeah. too. And most of the time he was too stoned. You couldn't get it. To dude. pick up the code. Like, what? Because we, the, what we would do for ourselves to make it more challenging is we couldn't say the words in direct succession. Yeah. yeah so yeah. we'd have to weave them into a couple of sentences. Yeah. And you would sometimes <laughs> it would take us three attempts and the camera would cut to him and he would yeah. just be. Yeah, and then he would come out <laughs> naked, and he had a, you know, but not a micro penis. He had a very small penis. It was comical. Can I show you know? Mario Rattler right Girl's yeah, penis? Yeah, I so, want your reaction live on the pod. Well, I, You're going to want to see this. this. I want to say this, Look too. at some dicks on this podcast. Fuck dude, it, this dude. This is it. This is the dick you review. This yeah. is the segment where we review dicks. Yeah, <laughs> On Patreon, you. you can send your dick pics. You this can like send your dick pics. This is like an OnlyFans girl now. You know, dude, you should do, you'll rate their dick on the pod for a certain amount of money. I should do that. That's hilarious. That's what girls do on OnlyFans. I just did a podcast with this girl. Girl, do you know Elsa John? Maybe she's a you know, might have seen her on Blacked. Oh wow, she's a she's a big porn. Star. I mean, people know her. She's very famous. She's yeah, like I guess an A list porn, porn star. Or sure, she retired now a couple years ago. But I did her podcast, and she does like you know a lot of them on OnlyFans. You can send them a dick pic, and they'll yes for like a hundred bucks or so. They'll or rate, it. rate it, you know, yeah, yeah. and send a video reacting to it. And so you should do that. Come, you're gonna rate Rat Dick Ralph's cock right now. Check so this out. Let me, I'm gonna fill everybody in a little bit. So Rat Dick Ralph, a fan, recently sent this video to Leo. Mm -hmm. It is <laughs> disturbing. It's so fucked up. This bro. might reawaken some of your PTSD, Mario, but I know you're willing to brave it. Come over yeah, here. Yeah, I played this. soccer, so I've seen a lot of. See, there we go, dude. Come yeah. watch this. Come over oh, here. Come, come here. Yeah, because we can't show it to the camera, so I want you to watch it over my shoulder. All right. God, this already looks fucking creepy. The yeah, bro. <laughs> I love this. It's what the fuck is even, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> even <laughs> happening, dude? My God. Yeah, this guy. No, 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 Oh my god, yeah, dude, yeah, dude. What would you rate that dick? Oh, dude, what would you rate that dick? Mario, dude, dude, what do you, you know? I'd rather get raped by another Chinese dude <laughs> <laughs> than looking at this video one more time. Dude, Holy you know, shit, do you know how many the of those facial videos? Expression is what makes it. I know you've all seen this, yeah? <laughs> it's so much more, oh it's worth the god. $20. He it's does that for terrifying. $20. It's $20, that's what he does. He just puts it on his Instagram, like, hey, red dick pics. For twenty dollars, he sends you that video, dude. So the fans will send it to me, and I have to watch him, even though I don't want to. But I'm like, God, ah, it's a goddamn Danny. What Danny would want to see this? All right, wait, I watch so, this guy. Again. Wait, wait, let me. I gotta fill everybody in on this real quick. So first of all, yeah. Ratic Ralph is a guy we found for the channel. Leo found him for I the found channel him, yeah. in a comedy show in 2020. Yes, he did a couple of videos for us. He is. A psychedelic drug addict. Yeah, that makes he, sense, yeah. he was a complete star in the videos he was in, but yeah. the fame Mario went to his head. The fame went to his head quickly, Mario. He started having threesomes with fans and his girlfriend. <laughs> he, he allegedly did <laughs> something him, dude. not forcing. great to his girlfriend and went to yeah, jail for a yeah, little yeah. bit. We cut ties. Yeah. He's occasionally come back been again a, a star of entertainment yeah. for reasons like that he's just sure. such a fucking wild card Insane. yeah yeah no Insane. i can i can see how this guy's like entertaining as fuck but entertaining but probably don't want to be associated with him exactly we yeah, don't want to yeah. be associated with well him, so. uh, and until, 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 until we, we need him again until we're in a viewership drought yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Back on. Hey, reviews you guys you but guys check us out yeah. I, I gotta tell mario <laughs> and the audience this story because we haven't yeah. talked oh about this story's crazy bro with the rat tickets so adam 22 is doing a series right now where he's auditioning men to have sex with his wife. Mm. Adam 22's wife, Lena the Plug. I don't know if the winner of this, it's gonna be a reality show contest. Winner gets to have sex with Lena the Plug. It's a very in a very rough stage right now. I'm not 100% certain that the winner is gonna bang her. Maybe there's a ha ha. You actually have to fucking bang this right obese by woman <laughs> right yeah. by a guy in Shanghai. Jesus. I don't know. But the filming is going to take place soon. I was offered a spot on it, but it was going to be such a long filming schedule. I just didn't really have time to fit it in. Adam wanted to know if I had any wild cards that would like to compete. And him and I decided that Rat Dick Ralph would be a fine candidate. <laughs> oh, my God. So Adam 22 has one of his employees reach out a woman. And then I'm going to read the exchange. Oh, right my God. <laughs> right now. Oh, God. Oh, my God. This is to Rat Dick, that guy you saw in the video. Yeah. So, hi, is this Rat Dick Ralph? LOL. This is. Ashley, I'm making up a fake name, with Plug Talk. Adam22 gave me your number. Here is the response from Rat Dick Ralph. <clears throat> yeah, right. Why would Adam22 have my number? 
I don't talk to him. Danny hardly talks to me anymore. And I just use this number to send dick pics to a few paying individuals. <laughs> if this is really Ashley, send your tits. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it's the it, most insane. Oh, and then my God. Adam what 22, Adam 22 oh, screenshots no. this and sends it to me. Can you tell him it's real? Yeah. LMAO. Yeah. So I, I just die fucking laughing. We get this text when we're in Montana. No. And so Leo has to reach out to Rat yeah. Dick and tell him it's indeed a real comedy. I, I told him, you know what? God. You know what he did? He's, you know, he's, he's diehard Danny Mullen for life, though. He, he's like, dude, if I do this, could, could I come back? He wants to come back if he does this. At this point, I, this is what happens. It's sort of like uh, the Holocaust. You're never supposed to forget. But in my case, I keep forgetting what his great crime was. Yeah. And I yeah. keep letting him back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was Holy sending. Holy sh- What a legend! What, is, what? What? Where is this person? He's downtown L.A. Dude. He's in L.A. Yeah, the, the downtown. Okay, you, might, you might want to. Like, yeah, you might want to interview him on your pod. You might want to interview him on your pod. I think you. <laughs> not in your apartment though. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go to his apartment and with a camera, Mario. That's what you should do. Go to do. his apartment. Yeah, it's the most have fucked had some up. Bad experience going to it, apartment. Yeah, you'll have a you'll yeah. have a bad experience here. It, the good news, it'll be a lot dingier than the rapists. Mm. That's oh. for sure. Mm, mm, mm. It'll smell about a thousand times worse. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to think of the symbol. There might be some ketamine. More likely not, mushrooms yeah. and crank, though. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, <laughs> he loves weed, dude. He's dabbing all day. And mushroom and crank, that's what he does. Yeah. Like, and, what does he call it? Like, some people do like a candy flip, a hippie flip, you know, like weed yeah. and molly or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He does like a, what's it called when you do mushrooms and crack? Oh, know, like, shit. Who knows? Like, yeah. How do you about feel, how do you feel about getting raped on a stained Murphy bed? Oh, dude, that is, it is a Murphy bed, right? That's, it's something, it's it, in, it goes up into the wall. Yes, it's a studio apartment with a Murphy yeah, bed that yeah. folds down. So you've been banged there? Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah rat dick. Unfortunately. What a fucking legend. Rat dude. dick That's Ralph crazy. in the house! Yeah, no, he's a legend, dude. I mean, he's a legend. Unfortunately, Did yeah. Did social media? Or is he yeah. just on your thing? He yeah, blew you, up. You want to know this? You want to know why we had to kick him out last, <laughs> the last time we had him around? He decided that uh, the dick pics were not enough to yeah. to sell, or the dick videos. Now he so he moved on to shitting videos, oh. where he would show himself shitting, and also you just pay him twenty bucks, and he'll just say the n word to anyone you want on, in a video, and yeah. just send it. He so would not. Like, oh, we, okay. we don't know that he was saying it to people. Like no, he wasn't yeah, calling yeah. black people. I think that. he would just say it. And then send it to someone, yeah. But yeah, yeah he was. He kind of has fear of success because he was actually doing well on the channel, and then he likes to eject himself from the. He likes to do, does it on purpose. I don't think he doesn't like the responsibility of showing up. I don't know what it is, but he always want. He always does that. He always like commits suicide on the channel. You know. I mean, like, I gotta give him one thing. He, the dude is ripped. No, no, that that that's what it looked like. I, I, like that's mean abs? that I'm saying. No, it no? was kind of nope. rolled. We're yeah. not gonna give you this one. It was good lighting. No. We're not gonna. Give you, you know this what? One. I think I have. I think I have I, just a I, regular. I don't want to yeah. watch the video again. But the lower. No, it's not angle, a video. I got nope. you. The lower angle of his. It worked. It's, it's like a caterpillar. A caterpillar yeah. has folds that look like they could be abs, oh. but they're really just that. Folds. Interesting. Watch, I'm going to find you just a nude that we have of him that I, mean, I sent to Dan. What do you think what? the last time Rat Dick Ralph worked out I don't think was. he's casually find a nude. I know. Of Rat Dick, yeah, guess. I mean, yeah, it's it's just, he sends us so many, dude. I'm talking like... Rat Dick well, has wait, an how does, he sell, does he have an OnlyFans? How does he sell the, the pics? Over Instagram. Take this Freelance is it. Freelance You can just look at it. I don't think the that's camera will much. find it. That's him. With okay, his stick. I gotta oh my god. Yeah, Let me see this. Yeah, blur that's, that off. That's, this not, one. that's not flattering. Oh at my all. god. Yeah, this is a great one. Yeah, if you want to feel great about your cock, Stop, you, dude. You, you gotta see <laughs> this. Actually, I do, I, do, I, do, I do wanna see this actually. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Take that in there, dude. Look that up don't yeah. scroll. You'll see, don't scroll. You'll see my Italian asshole. Cock. I don't know what you'll, you know, you'll see. Oh we're doing no, well. No, my asshole. Stop. Yo, he's you got big balls, though. I'm gonna give him yeah, that. Yeah, he's got big balls. The balls are pretty hefty, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I feel this is this is good. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I feel better. He does you know, a good thing. Do I don't, you feel rapeable, Mario? I feel rapeable. I mean, uh, I always by him, by that guy? No, no, I just mean in general. In general? <laughs> yeah, no, Mario is such a good looking guy. Like I'm not as, it I it was, would feel I, gay I if we saw your cock. I, I, was hotter, uh, I was hotter when I was young. I was more rapeable then, but still, you know, I think... What I happened? Very not, handsome. Stop. What happened to you? I don't. I feel like not much has changed. Dude, yeah, you look like you're a fucking stud, dude. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I think it's aging. No, I know. I know you're a model, though. I get it. I get it because I'm a very vain guy and I can tell you, yeah, you know, you even just you know, being closer to 30, you feel like you're not like 19 to 22. You really feel like 
you dig over the world. You know what I mean? But I do, feel like, I do feel like looks wise, like um, this is going to be such a douchebag conversation sure. now. You know? But like, you know, I feel like my looks were like, <laughs> I was really fucking good looking, like ridiculously good looking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then it just changed. And now I'm like in a different, it's just like when I was younger, I had some more baby fat. I was just more youthful, you know, sure. and now I'm just like a little bit more, you know, I got a little bit more, a little bit more, you know, like sunken in face, you know, a little sure. bit of that, like, you know. A <laughs> rape will put miles on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you still look You asked, how many yeah. times did you say, can we do a rape count? How many times did you say the word, dude? Holy <laughs> Said it a lot. He got me. Oh no. my god! I love this. You know, it's refreshing that you guys don't give a fuck and you just openly talk about this. Because sometimes sure. I bring this up to people, and they're like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry to hear this." And you guys are like, "Are you, you know, still a rapeable dude?" <laughs> you know going. what it is? It's like he he wants to really take the power out of something to the fucking I love it. fullest. I love that. No, I fucking yeah. love. It. I respect that. I yeah. also am guilty of because right. I've had such a. Fuck you. <laughs> I've had such a blessed life that I can, I can be a little not empathetic because yeah. I, like you, prior to that very unfortunate encounter, like you said, you came, you're a fucking six foot three, great looking guy oh, yeah. from a village. A great life, dude. Fucking, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I, I definitely have that sometimes and I can be um, super dark because I like, haven't seen the dark side of the world up close. Interesting, because most people who go super dark have seen the dark side. Yeah, it's, you know, it's the opposite have, with me. Interesting. I can. It yeah. seems like an abstraction. It's a comic book to me. Well, I think there's some there's some trauma that he must have. I, I've talked about this many times, but I feel like there was some trauma somewhere that he just isn't aware of. How fucking because are you? Trauma. I'm sorry, that's fucked up to say, but it, I don't know, man. He is like we uh, all have some sort of trauma. If we, we all do. Yeah, not, we you all know? do. Like, yeah, yeah. He's also like a his, his sexual side is very evident but also like crazy he's a little you know what i mean like that that is, tell me your favorite porn video that's what i mean we by always that. come back so well you know i watched one porn video 26 to 32 times <laughs> and i'm a freak leo this is you right now you are china when we accuse china of human rights violations to which we can add one to the list they're always like they always write back to the american fucking consulate like oh your country is guilty of racism it is much worse who are you to point finger Mm. They, that's what they do. Foreign governments, they always just use whatever the American radical left sure, sure. is whipping itself for. Yeah, yeah. They use that to misdirect from their human rights violations. Sure. That's you right now uh -huh. pointing out my viewing of one Amber Alina video where she throws up a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, that's what's going on. Uh, yeah, you've seen that video? It's hot. Uh, um, uh I have not. I've not. But have no, you? that's definitely something that went wrong in your childhood. You get a dig. I think so. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I mean, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder where it comes. I mean, I'm I'm really wondering about this stuff. Like, where do kinks come from? Because there's definitely mm -hmm. a big. There's a if if you go to Berlin and you go to Kit Kat, which is a fetish club, right? And the people who like you know being walked on a leash or like uh, when you go to Berghain, you'll see there's a the it's a call it's like a trough where you pee you know like mm -hmm. a urinal but like a, you know for a lot of people more efficient there's going to be people who are just going to ask you to pee in their mouth wow at a techno club it's a real thing because it's like a <laughs> fetish right wow i would say that there is a correlation between people who have these let's call them like unusual fetishes yeah and having had some sort of traumatic experience in a lot. I agree. Life, right? I don't do, I don't know the, the math. I'm not a psychologist. I but, agree. I, um, I, yeah. I just want to point out though, that I jerked off to, it was cause she had huge titties. The throwing up was incidental. Oh really? Yeah. God, God, and God. I don't even want to know. Oh, really? I don't even want to know what's in your fucking pornography basement. I, I acted out most of all my fantasies I've ever wanted to act out. And mainly of the, mainly they're really like fucking si simple. They're not gay, but it's like, I like to be naked in a room full of clothed women. Like a stripper. Oh, cool. It really like is the most fun for me. I, I used to put myself in those kind of situations in college all the I time. I mean, you could be a stripper. Yeah, man. I've thought about it. You know what I mean? I've thought about you, it. You look like you could literally, I could put you up right Hollywood now. Hollywood men just hit me up uh, like a year ago and they wanted me to like strip and host at their, <laughs> at Hollywood fucking Hollywood. Said. Yeah. It's it's the only male uh, like strip club there is. Can we do a video? And they told me that I would get a lot of pussy. They literally told me that I would be getting like, they'd be like, dude, it's all kinds of women and whatever you do with them after the show, like we don't, you know, you can have some fun, young dude, man. You could, I could put you up in the Vegas show, you know, like the, what's called Magic Mike show. Magic Mike? You would fit in so well. Audition for Magic Mike. Like, Oh, you did? I, yeah, I, just, I, got, well I, I, I couldn't da dance that well. I, I made it to the final I'm, call, bro. I'm, it's I'm German, not dude. the way they dance, bro. They're fucking no, like they're professional amazing, dancers. Dude. All I can do is I can dance to techno music. You know, like, yeah. can you spoon dance? <laughs> I like that. I like can, that. The can you do the traditional German? Like, no, dude. Like the Hansel and Gretel style dancing? No. You know, Why don't you tell them the idea? 
Danny, go ahead. I wanted to. He, he has an idea for no, uh, the, no, their OnlyFans yeah. no. that maybe we should run by you because it has a lot to do with the German culture. Yeah, sure. So why don't you tell them what you think they should do? So you know, there's traditional German dancing with either the leader hose and there's a guy playing the um, the, xyl- the not xylophone. It's like a, uh, yeah, no, the um, uh, accordion. Accordion. There yeah, we accordion, go. Yeah, accordion. Yeah. And then they do they do spoon tricks. Yeah, yeah, and they're my, dancing I've around. Seen, I know people do that. Yeah, it's <laughs> wow. Town, yeah. And it's two guys. It's always a, a, like two a pair of dudes doing the dance. These guys had an OnlyFans a couple of years back where they would do that and then when they were through with the dancing it when, was like an hour novelty, right it was like a, what, it was like about a, an hour and a yeah, half an hour and a half of dancing, of dancing. straight all choreographed all very very good yeah. i mean the routine got stale because you can only you yeah. gotta keep writing new material it takes yeah, time yeah, yeah, but, sure. but at the end of the hour and 30 minute <laughs> dancing they would start kissing. Oh, oh my nice. God. And then it would, they couldn't say it was incest <laughs> because it's only fans and that's illegal, but they would start kissing, start blowing each other. And the whole thing would culminate <laughs> in brotherly gay sex. Unprotected. But it was no, also a a missionary, right? I like when you said it was missionary. It was. was most it's concerning how much you'll just like think about this. We, so it, this didn't it. happen, Mario. Only, we thought it'd be hilarious. Yeah, we, we, all, we thought that if they started <laughs> an OnlyFans, it'd blow up. But that's funny because we called it because then years later, the Island Boys did that. Dude, they, they, they didn't have the, sex, did they? They no, made out on fucking They OnlyFans. probably would fuck. They, no, 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 but they would fuck. I know on OnlyFans because I'm friends with a lot of OnlyFans. This one guy, Dennis Dozio, shout out. He and his brother, they're both big reality TV stars in Italy. And they, he started on OnlyFans. They both did. And they were having trouble because they were making not videos together, interacting at all. But they just had even like shirtless photos and underwear together. And it was taken out because they're brothers. It's very strict. So really? I don't know. You guys, wow. yeah, they it couldn't do it. Off? They yeah. couldn't do it. Damn. So maybe you have to swap. Maybe maybe Leo has to yeah, maybe one of you guys. Oh, what God. is that? I'm curious. Be, um, I'm curious oh. why... Because obviously I get things like consent and age are very important. Obviously, if there's any evidence that a girl might be fucking trafficked or a girl yeah. might be underage, those are vulnerable groups you need to protect. Yeah. But why are governments and why is big tech and I, I don't know if you call OnlyFans big tech, but a big sexual platform. Why is it so prohibitive of incest? It, well, incest, good question. I don't I know. There's also, evil. can you name a, non, a non-religious reasons why two siblings shouldn't have protected sex? No. Shouldn't have protected sex? Mm-hmm. Well, because I think eventually the condom's going to come off and you might reproduce a retarded child that's mm-hmm. going to become a ward of the state or the taxpayers are going to have to pay for its medical shit. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. But if it's just for pleasure, I mean, you know, like a cousin... I don't know. I'm not saying it's. I'm just like there was this whole. This is an academic. We already said we would thing. fuck our second cousin. It's like I would maybe. Uh, if you'd if, fuck uh, if it's protected, right? There's a non-religious Jeez, reason. Shit. I don't know. It's weird. I'm agreeing. It's weird. Re- re- I wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? Hmm. Uh, I, I would also say this. Like, if if we're worried that we're gonna start shitting out dumb kids yeah. that are gonna be inbred, I mean, think of all the other institutions in this country that just make people <laughs> stupid yeah, yeah. and slow as if yeah. they were inbred. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this fucking. Our country now. What's up, Fed? It just, Fed? I mean, dude, like. He looks so, he's, look at this Handsome, guy. yeah. I know, yeah, yeah, he kind of looks like you. You guys look like you could be cousins. Yeah. What's up, look at you guys. Hey, you guys could be cousins. Yeah. Hey, look you guys want to fuck look on all Look at his bone structure. That's fucking crazy. He's very yeah. handsome, yeah. 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 Hmm? Is that why you're here? Is that why I'm here? Yeah. D- the handsome like, guy. Need, that's right. <laughs> he lives, so Austin, Dino, and another guy, and Aaron live in this house. Oh, they you all live here? here? They all live it's here. It's pretty oh, gay. I live know. down the street. He lives down the street. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, I just, I... What's up? That, yeah, I took the scooter here, parked it right there. I, I, I do yeah. feel that as, as social media um, completely hypnotizes the American youth as the fentanyl crisis rages, mm. as there are... There's no longer any sort of societal enforcing of the marriage nuclear family norm, meaning as like homeless people and people on welfare have six to eight fucking kids. And I'm not saying this happens in any one race in particular, because we've been to Appalachia where there are plenty of people who are on drugs and in broken households and have like 16 fucking kids. It happens all over the country. America is becoming so fucking stupid. That the average person you yeah. talk to on the street probably couldn't point out Germany on a Dude, map. It is, I, I did that. Yeah. I make YouTube videos where I oh. ask people to name. I ask them questions like, you know, um, point, name three European countries they and can. now place France on the map for me. Dude, it was like I thought these videos because I've seen them on like Jimmy Kimmel. They did that stuff, you know, where they ask yeah. Americans dumb, qu- like proof that Americans are dumb or whatever. And I always thought these were cut together where you basically d- cut together the dumbest Americans. Yeah. But dude, yeah. the 
It was unbelievable, especially I did at Coachella and I asked all these influencer oh, girls. Oh shit, my bro. God, so dude. I was like, also name a famous German person. And they everybody, they, I mean, they all said like Hitler. That was the only person. They knew. Course, but I get it. Yeah. You know, he's that, one that one is my, tough. That one is tough. My mind went to David Hasselhoff. But yeah. Mine would all be Dude, Nazi. David Hasselhoff. That's so funny. funny. What's this so funny. Bastian Schweinsteiger. That's fucking Schwe good. It's Schweinsteiger. Oh. Schweinsteiger. I like That's the, a good uh, one. Dennis, good soccer player. Dennis Seaver. Sh Dennis Seaver, the UFC fighter. Was it Einstein? or? Yeah, Einstein. There you go. He's also Jewish. But, you know, a lot of Jewish people are technically German. I would say, though, that with that backdrop, and also it's it probably stands out particularly to you because Germans are so well educated. Our buddy Mark from Germany, who we were yeah. talking about, super yeah. fucking smart. Yeah. I started my channel doing street interviews similar to yours. And I remember in Vegas, I interviewed a German guy who was super brilliant, Dude. super well educated, our age. Yeah. So compared to you guys, you guys are what we think of the German education system is producing people like our founding fathers yeah, who yeah. are well-versed in all sorts of fields. Sure. If you read one of their European, letters, yeah, it would yeah. read like John Quincy Adams writing yeah, to yeah. his fucking nephew. Dude, it is, it is, it is unbelievable. And you know, I studied in Berlin, I studied international business management mm -hmm. with a bunch of Americans and the level of, and I don't want to just shit on America, shit America, it's kind of God's country, America, freedom, all this for stuff. Sure. Yeah. But, <laughs> education system is kind of fucked up. Also, you pay so fucking much for it. Why the fuck is yeah. it so much worse? Yeah. Like, the level of education, like I, from a, like having a high school diploma and going to college, the level of math, especially that I had, just a baseline level of math going to, uh, in Germany, we have three, three tiers of school. Like there's a basic, intermediate, and then like a, a high level. So I went to the highest level for high school, right? But the, I, I basically had nothing to do because they adjusted the curriculum to Americans. Mm. I had a bunch of people from San Francisco studying with me. Dude, I, I had nothing to do for the first two semesters because it was all weird. We, we knew all that. And whenever I do the street interviews and I ask people, hey, name three countries in Africa and all that shit, you know, Americans have no fucking idea. Whenever I found a European person, it's not just Germans, I found a Swedish person. They'd be like this, this, this. And they even know American states. It's just, yeah. I don't even know how that's possible. So it's because Americans don't really value education. Let's try this right now. Austin, name three, name three countries in Africa. In Africa, yeah. like Zambia, Egypt, uh, Nigeria. Dino, name stuff. three more. Uh, Ghana, Toga, Guinan. Toga and Guinan? Never heard of those. <laughs> Have you heard of Toga or Guinan? I know Tonga and uh, yeah, Papua Tonga. New Guinea. Yeah, Papua yeah New I don't Guinea. think those yeah. are African, yeah. buddy. <laughs> you know what somebody said was like uh, Wakanda. That was my favorite. Wakanda. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Wakanda. But I don't. It. I don't think it's really a problem with our teachers or the education system really itself. It's more just like people just don't give a fuck. It's just like how can I cheat? How can I? Yeah. Not. How can I do the least amount of effort possible and still pass? Like. Just nobody cares. Like, nobody's trying. I will say that that is... I don't know if this is done in Germany, but there needs to be some motivation going on. I would have loved in fourth grade for a dude in a suit to come into school with a, 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 a presentation to just basically show to, if you work hard and master these subjects, this is the kind of car you can drive. Right. This is the kind of piece of ass you can be banging. Yeah. yeah. If you don't master these subjects... If you don't use a condom when you're having sex in your freshman yeah. year of high school, this is the kind of accommodation you're going to be living in. The laser pointer goes to a Section 8 block. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the kind of woman you're going to share the rest of your life with. Yeah. Obese chick oh with fucking God. pigtails. We <laughs> should do that, dude. We should present to high schools. And it's do this. weird, though, because I think the more we enforce that, also, it's not even true. I don't think you, you get a better job from, especially now, you know, it's changed not a little bit. Education is yeah. different. America is also different because in Germany, it's much more linked to your education. I feel like in Germany, there's a clearer path with mm -hmm. like, if you study, you go to university and you work for Mercedes yeah. and you have a good job. Mm -hmm. Whereas in America, there's a much there's a much bigger focus on becoming an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That's why I love America personally, but if I wanted to have a regular life, study a job, become an engineer, mm -hmm. raise a kid, not pay for college, have free healthcare, Europe is 
10 times more livable in my opinion. Yeah. But anything outside the box, like being an entrepreneur, doing entertainment, all this stuff mm -hmm. that essentially we're doing, yeah. it's way more, it's way easier in America. And I think that's maybe one of the um, the factors yeah. that, you know, sure. cause this course, divide sure. when it comes there's, to yeah. there, There's maybe paralysis by analysis here where there's so much shit you can do mm. that, yeah, I think you're right. Because when I was in my later years of high school and in community college, I was still like, maybe I can be a guitar player. Yeah, no, in Germany it's clear. I knew that I wanted to become, I studied, I love chemistry and I love science and shit. And I, I don't know, I loved, I actually loved school and shit. So like, what I, do you think about Zyklon B? I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Cyclone B. Yeah, it's, it's, they used it in a certain camp over there. Oh, that's, well, I mean, oh, that's the that's allegedly the, yeah. used it. Allegedly used it. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> no, no allegations. You Continue. Uh, I could not be sure of that. Um, no. So uh, for me, the path was clear. I was like, I'm gonna study chemistry. I'm gonna work for Bayer or a big pharmaceutical company in Germany, and I was excited about that shit. And that's how you gain status in Germany. If you work for BMW and you are a uh, top level engineer, that's the wow. equivalent of making it. Yeah. And America, it's like, we don't idolize entrepreneurs. Like here, here, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, yeah. especially Steve Jobs. I mean, he, you know, he's like people, there's movies about him. He's like a hero yeah. for people. Right. Right. In Germany, we don't have that. Nobody idolizes Nobody the mid-level manager at Sony no, or exactly. at, at uh, like Morgan Stanley even. Like yeah. if, yeah. Um, yeah, like, uh, all, all the guys I know who are just white collar guys, even if they make like 250 grand a year, yeah. they would all happily trade lives with a social media personality or a yeah. DJ. Yeah, interesting. No, that's very, you get a lot of recognition from that kind of stuff in Germany, Yeah, which is there's pros and cons. Again, I think, and I thought about this because I'm engaged now. I got engaged mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Thank to you. To a Jewish Thank woman. You. Thank you. Smart. To a Jewish woman. woman. Yep. Jew. She's a Jew. She's a Jew. Yeah. I'm, I'm an ally, all right? I'm yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking about, you know, like essentially at some point having a kid and I was like, dude, I want to, I'm, I'm in, I want to be in America, you know, I'm going to yeah. get my green card and all that stuff. But dude, sometimes the thought of being able to live in Europe where I can go to, like I can send my kid to college for free. Yeah. I can have healthcare. Dude, my friend went to Portugal, had an accident on a motorcycle. Yeah. Like fuck, like really bad. Like um, he, um, he, um, broke something it was not i mean he wasn't you know american no friend or german american friend american friend, american okay. friend went on vacation to portugal paid the bill in in the portugal hospital and he was like oh fuck in america this would have fucked me he didn't have insurance or anything 15 bucks that's hilarious that same exact bucks. i have the same story it was a scooter he was in lisbon he tripped passed out fucking ambulance wakes up in the hospital concussion not nothing crazy little yeah. broken wrist yeah uh some some cuts yeah 15 dollars have a nice day exactly. hottest nurses of all time oh, that's important yeah. too portugal is a great Dude, country beautiful portugal people, is, man i i had a scare where i couldn't come back to america and they basically wanted to send me back to germany but they're assholes at the border i'm you can be glad you guys are americans because mm -hmm. the way american immigration people treat foreigners is unbelievable dude wow. they're absolute dicks they're trained to be assholes mm -hmm. they like um they want to escape they wanted to break me they said they did some jedi mind tricks on me and shit and then they were like Damn. okay we're gonna take your visa away from you and you can never come back to america and they told me that Damn. and then they sent me into a dark room for 45 minutes without my phone what and i just thought fuck? about my life and then they checked in on me and because i didn't break or confess anything I'd done, they were like, okay, you're good to go. But for 45 minutes, what? I thought that I could never come back to America and my life was over here. Mind you, I was already had a place here. I had a career. I had a, a girlfriend at the time, you know? So um, in that moment, I was like, okay, fine. I'll just move to Europe. I was like, you know, I'm very German. I'm very like, when something yeah, happens, yeah. I'm like, what's the next step? What's the next sure. step? Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, dude, the idea of living in Berlin mm. or Lisbon Amazing. or Madrid, these are my top three in Europe. Probably none like, of them would be bad. Lisbon Amazing, was dude. like so much. I gotta cheaper. get out of here, Leo. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get out of here. I gotta go to the gym, motherfucker. I gotta start oh, looking yeah. like Mario, yeah. dude. It's been a. Yeah, we've been going for a while. Chinese guy, Austin. How long have we been going? About two hours. All right, man. Well, this, this is like the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, man. we Let's could go. keep going, but uh, let we gotta go do some other stuff. I also have some stuff to do. So, guys, we love you. Check out the Patreon. Check out Danny's Patreon. Check out Mario's podcast. Plug everything you want to plug, Mario. Um, subscribe to my OnlyFans. Yeah, percent off only this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I don't know. Just MarioAdrian.com, Instagram, mainly Instagram. All my show dates are we'll there. We'll plug it down below, yeah, yeah. dude. And go Thank see him you. live. He's hilarious. Yeah. And uh, maybe hop up on a Wednesday show with us. We don't. Yeah. We don't have our Wednesday show anymore. Friday show. Friday, yeah. Friday nights we get like two Friday nights at the AHA. You're welcome. Like, well, you're sure. on the next show. Yeah. On the rape material will I'm kill. I'm down. I'll Guaranteed. do the rape material in do a dark room. Do anything you want, dude. In a yeah. dark room. In the dark room. If 
and it yeah. was a pleasure. And I did his pod. Uh, check out our podcast. Oh, yeah, it was a fun his. episode. It was a really yeah. fun episode. Let's yeah. get you on also at some point. Yeah, get on yeah. there, bro. He gets yeah. some views. All right, yeah. guys. Peace. Peace.